In this video, we're gonna have a 24 hour reading challenge, but we're gonna go to Barnes and Noble, gonna go to the library, we're gonna go to indie bookstores and hang out with our besties. This is literally the most fun video ever. So make sure you subscribe because there's new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, and I hope you guys enjoy. Good morning, friends. We are getting ready to go into Barnes because we are in uh, Champagne, which is like an hour and a half away. And we're here for Bane's chemo treatment. I am pretty sure the cancer's back. We don't know 100%, but we're starting on uh, giving him like a steroid shot today and then like getting his chemo going again They'll confirm at the end of the day, but like they pretty much were like it's back And honestly, I feel like I'm in a very good headspace where I kind of was Expecting it to be back because of like how like sick he's been feeling and stuff And in the last vlog I shared that we got a call from our like primary vet and they were saying that he like what were they saying? They were like, he might have spleen cancer, like he might need surgery, like all these things. And we were so stressed. So it almost feels comforting in a way, knowing that the lymphoma, which is like the cancer that he has previously had and that they said he was cancer free from a month ago. Um, it's almost comforting knowing that it's back because we at least know how to like navigate it. Because thinking of a whole different cancer and maybe getting surgery and he's like almost 10 in like a few months, we were just like, that is so much. Um, so we really feel comfortable with like his vet that he has. If you guys live in the area, uh, you should definitely go to the University Teaching Hospital in Champaign. They have literally a veterinary, veterinary school in Champaign. And so they have like all the students, the best of the best all in one area so they do such an incredible job and we feel so comfortable with them and um if you guys don't know our dog bane we got him at like 10 weeks and he was diagnosed with cancer like nine months ago 10 or 11 somewhere in there like not a year yet but like getting close um and we've just been like navigating that and they let us know that he was cancer free a month ago but it's back so again i'm feeling very good because we know how to treat this um what he was using before was working for a long time obviously over the last month he hasn't been on that because he like was cancer free but it's just come back and it's come back rapidly so um we're gonna go into barns because if you guys are new here this is like my thing like anytime that i am coming to champagne for bane's chemo treatments i'm gonna be in barns because there's just something Huh, special about going to a bookstore and I swear it just puts me in the best mood and I also am feeling very grateful for you guys after my last video I feel like I was just given so much love and support and all of your kind words really over the last two videos because I feel like I've just like y'all know I've been down bad but I'm feeling good today I'm feeling very um grateful also even though the things that I feel like were I was really struggling with in the last two videos are not like over and I'm not past and I still kind of am down bad I'm leaning into like gratitude and really trying to like dig myself out of this hole and I feel like the first start to that is going to the bookstore so we're gonna go in the bookstore see what we can find you guys know I love 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 getting um like romance books that's just like my thing and i've been stepping out to reading different types of genres and so obviously in this video it's going to be a fun reading video i feel like you guys are really going to enjoy it but also i've been trying to add in more yeah i'm so tired by the way bane's appointments are at 9 45 and it's an hour and a half drive away from um the like my hometown to get him here and i have to like give him his meds before he comes and like he has to eat and then i also worked out which i always try to do before i come here so it was like a early morning and also late night because i knew that i would be here and not able to like just physically sit down and work and type and do all the things that i normally do i do think that i'm going to go to a coffee shop and um do some work there after we leave barnes but um, yeah, I've been reading romance and I've been really trying to read more books that aren't just romance, but I just, I don't know. I, there's something about romance. I feel like whenever I leave the genre and come back to it, I'm like, ah, I'm so happy to be home. I'm so happy to be here. So, um, anyway, let's head inside and see what we can find. <laughs> I 
I have a new appreciation for the fiction section because normally I feel like I go straight to romance, but I feel like I am like excited to actually be in this section. I think it's because I read, um, what did I read recently? Um, My Dark Vanessa and loved it. And I think that that's the first time in a long time that I've read like a just true like literary contemporary fiction type book and really loved it. So now I'm like, what other gems are in here? So if you guys have read a book recently that is like in this section that you love, comment it below because I will want to find more books like this and in this section. I don't think I ever thought that I would like be as obsessed with this type of genre as like romance or like thrillers, but like I love that book. So I feel like there's so many other good books that I just haven't found yet. I haven't heard of this book, but I swear the second I see a black person on the cover, I'm like, what is this book about? Because this actually could be a good one. Um, I've never heard of it though, but I always just gravitate to books based literally on their covers. This book looks really good. It's called These Impossible Things and it's about three Muslim women and they just navigate life like love, sex, faith, and all the things like womanhood. But the only thing that's like keeping me from like wanting to bring this home is Beth O'Leary. She gave like a quote and I feel like whenever someone gives a quote on the book, it's usually like an author that's similar to that person's style of writing. I don't know if that's like true or not, but I always feel like it's that way. And I don't really care for her writing very much. So I don't know if I'm gonna bring this home, but it does look like a really good book. I feel like I have to be more cautious in this section because I don't know like who's a good author, like what's good, what's not, because this is not like my section. Like I don't wanna say my, cause like none of them are my sections cause like I don't live here. But I feel like coming in here, it's like a whole new world. And it's kind of taking me back to like when I first started getting into reading and didn't know like any authors, didn't really know like what was like good writing and what wasn't. And I guess I wouldn't say like anything's necessarily bad writing cause there's something for everyone. But like, I didn't know what I liked out of that genre. And now it's kind of like exciting because I'm figuring that out now in this genre, like, in my 30s and it's just kind of fun. I love when books start coming out with these type of covers because it gives summer to me. This is the breakup vacation. It says how far will you go to win back an ex. I feel like these are the perfect like summer fluffy like books that you can literally devour in one day. And I always try to find these before I go on vacation. I'm going on vacation in literally like two weeks. I feel like this would be the perfect type of vibe. The like chokehold that this book has on book talk is wild. I read Done and Dusted and I didn't like dislike it it just was kind of like mid for me i feel like it was kind of predictable but it was like fluffy it was cute but i don't know if i want to get this one just because like i wasn't obsessed with done and dusted and i've been trying not to buy books that like are just going to be mid which i do think that like they have a place of their own sometimes you know like sometimes you just need like a mid book like i don't know when you would really need it but maybe like if you're um coming down from like a really like I don't know, great book that you were obsessed with. Mid books, I feel like, are just a nice little palette cleanser, but I just don't know, like, do I want to read this? I don't know. I liked the writing. It was fluffy. It was fun. It just, like, was... I don't know, it was mid, but maybe I would like this one even better than the first one. This is Lynn Painter's new book, and I swear this woman, like, put something in her coffee because she has written so many books in, like, the last two years. I read better than the movies, I think, two years ago, and since then she's written, like, I don't know, I think this is, like, her fifth book or something, like, and she has another one coming out this year. Like, I swear she comes out with, like, two, three books a year, and they're always, like, really fluffy and cute and fun, um, but I cannot keep up with her books because she releases so many which is kind of like a good problem to have this cover also looks really cute i don't even know what it's about but like i feel like i picked up this book at another bookstore oh uh, i don't know where maybe in chicago um but this looks really really cute taylor has already flown through the first two books in this series and this series is so long let's see how long this is like 800 pages this is wild so thick but what i like about this is it's like so much dialogue you can see all those page breaks i don't know if i've shown this to you guys before i think i have but like anytime you see page breaks that just shows that there's like tons of dialogue whereas like in other books i feel like they have some dialogue but like not 
just a wild amount like this book is literally just like straight dialogue which is my favorite um and i finished binding 13 and loved it and taylor already finished the first two so i kind of want to bring home redeeming six the last time i came in here you guys said i had to get fangirl by rainbow rowell and i was hoping that they still had this special edition in here whenever i came back and they still do so i'm definitely going to bring this one home because literally you guys were just like going wild you're like oh my god i love that book as a kid and i never read it i read um other books by this author i read like eleanor and park and stuff but i never read fangirl so uh have to bring home this special edition copy because it's so pretty i'm so happy for hannah bonham young seeing her books in a bookstore has to be like the wildest thing ever like any indie like author that just like people become obsessed with she wrote out on a limb still haven't read that one yet but i did read next of canon really liked it um any indie author i'm just like oh my god like screaming from the rooftops like so happy that they're in uh barns like i don't know it just has to be like such a surreal feeling to see your book in the bookstore like this is just a girl like she's just a girl she's just a girl who wrote a book that people fell in love with and now she's in Barnes and Noble like and I do think like there are probably some authors who like write a book and they're like expecting to like be in Barnes and be like you know uh, incredible authors and like whatever but like I feel like there's so many new authors who are like just just writing books for fun like Lauren Roberts who wrote Powerless it's cool seeing her story like on TikTok she shared her entire experience of writing the book and she started writing her book that is now like a New York Times bestseller she started writing it when she was 18 years old and like at 18 do you think that you're going to be like a New York Times bestseller like no probably not but I think it's like so cool seeing these authors here and I always want to support them I do already own this book with like the original uh cover but it's just like so cool seeing these uh, books and bars. I read this book and loved it and I always forget about it. It's a queer read. It's called Fly With Me by Andy Burke and literally someone on Instagram asked me today like what's a good queer read you recommend and I didn't even think about this one and I think I always forget about it because one no one talks about it but two like there's only one copy here and you can see it's not like there's one copy because it's like sold out. It's like there's one copy here left and maybe they have like two or something because there is like a little extra space here but um you just like don't hear about it very often but i love this book there was so much dialogue in it it was funny i found myself like giggling while i was reading it i really really love this one i don't know if you guys have seen all of the like stuff that's all over the internet about people literally freaking out about emily henry like reposting who was it it was like an actor and actress they had a picture together and she like reposted on her stories like a picture of them i cannot remember the name of them um but i don't know if you guys know this pretty much every single book of emily henry's is in production right now like for um like a show or like a movie or whatever and the only book of hers i have not read is people we meet on vacation and i need to read this one i own it um i've read beach read i've read book lovers like i've read all of these and they're gonna be turned into tv shows so now i'm like i have to read people we meet on vacation especially before it comes out i think that that's actually one of the first ones that's coming out that and beach read um but I think I might take that on vacation with me. I feel like it would be a great vacation read. Another book I haven't read is The Proposal by Jasmine Gullery, which is wild because I read The Wedding Date by Jasmine Gullery. I read Drunk on Love by Jasmine Gullery. I read By the Book, which is a book that's not here, but I read that by her. I think her writing is so cute, but this is like the most popular one. It was like the Reese's Book Club pick, um, and I think it's one of her most popular reads. But I have a thing about like, like I can't read the most popular book. I don't know what it is. I think I. I set myself up for failure because I put the book on such a high pedestal so I always pick like another book which is why I picked this one and then this one and buy the book I always pick the other ones that like people don't know about because if like I don't like it I'm like okay like I'm like I don't know one of few who've like read this book and I don't know I need to read this but I just always have like a weird thing about reading like the super popular books. I guess it's not that I don't want to read it I just can't read them first like they have to be like the second or third book that I read like with Hannah Bonham Young's book Out on, Out on a Limb it was super popular couldn't read it like I still haven't read it yet I want to read it now because I've read Next of Kin already and I love her writing but there's something about it like I just can't read the popular book first I think because I put like the book on such a high pedestal that I'm like oh I'm for sure gonna be let down so if I read a book no one's talking about I can't be let down you know what I mean oh my god guys okay so I think I've shown this to you guys in multiple videos but this book um actually was released today which is the 19th um and 
it has been in bookstores prior to today but it's like officially was released today which makes me so excited speaking of excited um this series you guys know i'm obsessed with taylor has literally finished this book she's finished this book she's finished um where's the other one this one and she i think is on this one right here so she only has two books left and she's literally finished them in like two weeks which is wild amazing but wild i bought this book a while ago um it's called unsteady by hayden corin um but i bought it with a different cover and now i kind of want this cover like whenever authors go and change the covers i'm like hmm like i kind of want the new one like i don't know if i'm the only one who's like that but like a lot of the time i feel like they change them for whenever they come into barnes like this book was not in barnes and it was just like an indie book that i just like found and now i want to like buy this book because the cover looks so cute it's like a hockey romance um it said reese arise reese is desperate to feel anything sadie wants to stop feeling so much so don't know what it's about but i know it's a hockey romance and it like is one that's literally on my shelf it just has a different uh cup. i also love seeing the art of scandal here i've just recently been seeing this i saw it in chicago i feel like this barn does such a great job of bringing good books my barns in my hometown does not but this one and the one in fairview heights that i go to with sister christy and alex they do such a great job of like bringing in good books there i think that this book is one of the most like under hyped books i never hear anyone talking about it and it was one of my favorite reads last year i rated 4.5 out of 5 stars I feel like if you like Happy Place, you'll really like this book, um, Happy Place by Emily Henry. It's such a great book. It also like has a great romance, but there's also so many other themes that I feel like are so good and people don't talk about enough. There's a book that I've heard a lot of people talk about that I am really excited to pick up. And what's funny about this book is one of my friends actually said that she hated this book. Well, not hated it, but she like rated it two stars. It was not for her. And the reason she said it wasn't for her, I feel like are gonna be the reasons why I will love it. One thing that she said was that the book was really corny and y'all know I love 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 let me see if I can find it I love a corny read like anything that's gonna make me just like giggle that's gonna be almost unrealistic that's gonna be like very happily ever after type of vibe that's the type of book that I like to read and this is why I always encourage you guys to like read reviews but also like take them like I don't want to say with a grain of salt because definitely take them like seriously but like know what you like to read because just like um just because she didn't like it doesn't mean that I won't like it because the things that she said in her review that she didn't like I'm like I think I will love that um and the book is Ready or Not by Cara Bastone it's a surprise pregnancy on the back it literally says this a surprise pregnancy leads to even more life-changing revelations and this heartfelt slow burn friends to lovers romance I love a friends to lovers and it's supposed to be super corny super corny super like cheesy super like unrealistic and that is what i like i love like i absolutely eat up fluffy reads definitely go over to taylor's channel i love her recs i feel like the recs that she gives are very like she gives a lot of like literary fiction and contemporary fiction recommendations and i feel like whenever i am looking for um books in that genre i really gravitate towards her like um recommendations because they're so good but again I feel like this is the beauty of books like because I know what I like to read and I think you have to read a lot to kind of figure out what you like to read but because I know what I like to read I know that the things that she didn't like I will probably like and maybe I'll hate this book and this whole like little chat will literally mean nothing but I think that that's like something to remember so if you see someone who's like oh my god I hate this book two stars one star ask them why ask them like the reasons why they didn't like it and some people like maybe they'll be like oh I didn't like it, it was this like it being a slow burn or oh maybe I didn't like it being um super insta love like if you like one of those things like you might like the book um for example only for the week by natasha bishop love that book and um one of my friends heather also go to her channel her like book recs are so freaking good especially if you love dark romance i think her books are great um she loves the slow burn she loves the slow burn and that book is kind of giving insta love and she's like i didn't really care for it being insta love i eat up insta love like i just gobble it up like anytime someone's obsessed with me right off the bat like if they look at me and they're like oh i need her like she's like my type of girl i eat that up and so i feel like you just have to know like what you like before you go into a book and definitely like listen to reviews of like your friends and stuff but also like if you know what you like 
you're gonna like what you like and it might not be like what someone else liked so I was excited to pick this one up um, maybe I'll hate it and again this whole chat could literally mean nothing but I feel like that's something that you don't hear enough about in like the bookish world because just because a book was rated one or two stars by someone else does not mean that you'll rate the same because we all have different interests for a reason. I also have a huge stack of books already and now I'm contemplating like my life because I already have so many books at home but we are gonna bring these home. I think this, this is one of the coolest editions of To All The Boys I've Loved Before. It literally looks like a Bible. It's so cute but I had to come in the YA section because I wanted to see what was over here. I am so excited that this is out. I think it officially re releases today, the 19th. Um, I literally picked this up in one of my last vlogs in the airport um, and I got it like a couple days before the release which I was so excited about but now it's officially in the bookstore which is so cool. I loved Ace of Spades. It's the same author who wrote that one which I also, this is like super random, a little off topic but kind of on topic. I am so surprised that um, Binding 13 is like supposed to be in the YA section here they didn't put it in the YA section they put it over in the adult section but that book does not like belong in YA like it's categorized as young adult um but it doesn't feel like it belongs there but um yeah I ended up picking up Redeeming Six because I love that series so much this is the original cover of Fangirl and I remember picking this up at the library when I was a kid I also loved Eleanor and Park this was one of my favorite books and I want to read it again just to see like it gives if it gives me all the feels that I got when I read it when I was a kid also love radio is such a good book but I wish that they hadn't changed the cover I feel like the original cover was so cute and this one is like cute but it's not nearly as like I don't know it just doesn't grab your attention like the other one did um I own the other cover and I'm so glad that I have it I'm back with a haul I got so many books guys why you ask I don't know. I literally don't know, but we're going to go through them. So, um, I found a book by a black author that I had to buy. I already have bought it before, but I wanted to buy it to put into the free little library. You guys know that I always am doing that. I picked up The Air He Breathes by Brittany Cherry. I feel like when I'm buying books by black authors in Barnes, like I'm directly supporting them to like be able to get back in there because I am always doing Amazon like book hauls because I cannot find the books that I want to read by black authors in Barnes. Can't find them at indie bookstores. Most indie bookstores don't carry them. Like even when I went to Last Chapter Bookstore in Chicago, like they had a great selection. They had like diverse reads in there, but like a lot of the like urban romance, a lot of the newer books that aren't like popular yet, you don't find them there. So unfortunately, like Amazon is a space to find those books, but I almost feel like I want to support the author as best I can. So like that is like the easiest avenue to do that. I do use bookshop.org, which is a way to support um, businesses like the book, small bookstores to give them like revenue instead of giving Amazon. But again, I feel like we all have to do our part to give back and I try to do the best that I can in the best way I know how. And like, I could easily just shop at indie bookstores and only shop at indie bookstores, but like they're not going to have a lot of the diverse reads that I love. They're not going to have books by authors who are like indie authors that are super, super like you got to dig to find them. You know what I mean? And like on my last Amazon book um, haul that I did, a lot of those authors had like less than 500 reviews because they're like so new. So I really want to like still support those authors, even though they don't have like a lot of hype yet. And hopefully we can hype them enough to get them into indie bookstores or to get them into barns. Um, but yeah, I love this book. This is is her first book ever in Barnes which is so exciting for her because you guys know I love Brittany Cherry's writing she's like one of my favorite black authors um, she always has like a little side plot in her books and this book says I was warned about Tri warned about Tristan Cole stay away from him people said he's cruel he's cold he's damaged and I've heard that this is one of her best books and like her best series um, and I've read three of her books and loved all of them so I got that to put into a free little library because I wanted to support her I also ended up getting book four in the boys of Tom and series um, taming seven is book uh, five it has not come out yet I think these titles are super confusing because like the first book is binding 13 which is obviously book one that's pretty easy book two is keeping 13 super easy super you know it's fine that's book two then we get into book three which is saving six 
Now, those numbers are a little too close for me. And then we get into book four, which is redeeming six. And I know that the numbers coincide with the players. Like, um, number 13 is like, um, I think six is, Gip is it Gypsy's or no, number six maybe is Joey's number. Um, I'm not really sure, but I obviously know that like 13 is like the, uh, male main character's number and I um also speaking of like I said male main character but I would normally say MMC which is like an acronym for male main character so you don't have to constantly say it over and over again I want to do like a little chat later on about like a lot of the acronyms or maybe I guess I could do it now but um sometimes I'll say YA and that means young adult so like when I'm in the young adult section instead of being like I'm in the young adult section I'll just be like this is a YA book or I'm in the YA section um FMC is female main character instead of saying female main character you just say fmc um dnf would be if i did not finish and i never dnf books so some books um some people do dnf books i don't because i feel like sometimes the ending can like totally make me fall in love with a book um but that's what dnf means i'm trying to think of some of the other acronym acronyms but if you guys um know what they are comment below and like share your wealth of knowledge to people who are new readers there are so many new readers that are here on this channel who are like just getting into reading and I actually got a comment from one of you and said like hey can you explain what these acronyms mean and I was like sure like for sure and I'm sure there are so many of them that I like don't even think about like uh, TBR is like to be read so like the books that you want to read in the future so like I make a little TBR pile every month of like the books I want to read so I'm like knowing what's like front of mind you know um so yeah anyway comment below if you guys know any acronyms i want to help out um a newer reader and i uh, also want you guys ask what wattpad was which wattpad was i think because it's not my era i'm pretty sure wattpad is where like authors would just like write stories and like a lot of authors actually have their books in barns but they started writing on wattpad and they like built a following like that it kind of is giving like Tumblr vibes, like where authors would like write, like, I mean, you could go and like write a story there, I think. But that era, I think was like four years after I was like, like that era, Wattpad era was when I was in college, when I wasn't reading like for fun. So I think I missed out on a lot of that. But there are a lot of Wattpad books and a lot of people, some people love Wattpad books, some people don't. And you can see on the back of some books, it'll be like, this is a Wattpad book because it literally came from Wattpad. Um, and some people don't like them because they're very like wild and crazy and like they usually have like wild plot twists and stuff because like people who are writing them, they're just, this is like for fun, you know? And, um, usually like the book will become so hyped up enough where like people are like, please create this into a book so I don't have to just read this like online. I think that's like my best like interpretation of it, at least from what I found. Like a lot of my friends who are younger than me read books on Wattpad, but I did not because I was in college at the time and I was like not reading for fun. So anyway, I have a bone to pick with this because book five is Taming Seven. That's the name. It's Taming Seven. That's confusing. So once we get to book six, is it going to be like Saving Seven? Like, I don't know. I don't know. So it'll be interesting. But this book is so long. It's almost 800 pages, but I feel like I eat these books up. I also picked up um fangirl by rainbow rowell i don't even really know what this book is fully about but i wanted to get it because the edges are so pretty the cover is really pretty and i absolutely loved eleanor and park which was one of my favorite books by this author i'm sorry i'm yawning so much i'm just like being so real hopefully it feels like we're on facetime together because i actually used to like yawn in my videos and it was just like a time where i was just like very tired in my life um like early last year and people would literally be like stop yawning in your videos <laughs> and i'm like i'm sorry i can't help it i yawn i'm a human i'm not a robot so ever since then like that's the thing about being on the internet is like small things that people say it won't even be like mean but it'll be like can you stop like yawning it like distracts me from the video or like stop me from this and that or stop doing this and that and then it makes you overthink as a like person who's making videos for just their friends like imagine you just pull out a camera and you're just like talking and then someone random is like hey you're yawning yawning is like really like messing up this video like I'm doing this for fun I'm just I'm just a girl with a camera like I'm just you know um but yeah so anyway I feel like sometimes you can easily overthink things and I definitely do I get in my head about like just all kinds of things um so yeah anyway um 
Picked up Ready or Not. I am really excited to read this. I don't know if I like this, and the only reason I'm not sure if I like it is because of the accidental pregnancy trope. I've never read that trope before. Um, so this will be like my first one, but on the back, uh, Abby Jimenez wrote like a little blurb, and that makes me really excited because I love Abby Jimenez's writing. Uh, she actually has a new book coming out in April, which I cannot wait for. These authors are just, they're just, going crazy with the books which I love and this again says a surprise pregnancy leads to even more life changing revelations in this heartfelt slow burn friends to lovers romance so excited for that and then the last book that I picked up is the one actually I was most excited about this is the one I literally went in there for and it's expiration dates by Rebecca Serrell who wrote in five years which is one of my favorite romances well I guess I don't know if I'd say favorite because I read it like two years ago um, but I really loved it like really really loved it um, and this book is a book that was recommended by um, one of my friends here on YouTube. I want to make sure that I like get her channel right because I feel like if I'm going to be sharing people's channels, like I should, you know, say the right thing. But I know her name is Corey. I think that's like how you say her name, but I don't know if that's uh, what her channel name is because like some people put like different names on their channel but if you haven't watched her videos they are so good she's a black um booktuber and her editing is wild like when you see her edits you're gonna be like whoa like this is so good and it, she definitely takes so much time to create the videos that she creates yeah so her um her um YouTube channel is Corey Tyler. I will uh, link her and Heather and Taylor below because I love their channels and I love their recs. But she actually got an arc for this book and I hadn't even heard about this book. I hadn't even heard that it was coming out. Like I've heard nothing about it. And I have like a list of books I'm excited to read by the authors that I love, but I've only read one book by this author. So I think that's why it wasn't really on my radar. This looks so good. So let me read the inside. It says, being single is like playing the lottery. There, There's always the chance that with one piece of paper, you could win it all. And it says, Daphne Bell believes the universe has a plan for her. Every time she meets a new man, she receives a slip of paper with his name and a number on it. The exact amount of time they'll be together. Now, this is giving, like, magical realism, which I'm here for. I'm not a big fantasy girl, but, like, if I get a sprinkle of magical realism, I feel like I enjoy it. It says, the papers told her she'd be, she'd spend three days with Martin in Paris, five weeks with Noah in San Francisco, and three months with Hugo, her ex-boyfriend turned best friend. Daphne has been receiving the numbered papers for over 20 years. Years, always wondering when there might be one without an expiration. Finally, the night of a blind date at her favorite Los Angeles restaurant, there's only a name, Jake. <gasps> but as Jake and Daphne's story unfolds, Daphne finds herself doubting the paper's predictions and wrestling with what it means to be both committed and truthful because Daphne knows things Jake doesn't, information that, if he found out, would break his heart. Told with her signature warmth and insight into matters of the heart, Rebecca Serrell has finally set her sights on a romantic love. The result is a gripping, emotional, passionate, and yes, heartbreaking novel about what it means to be single, what it means to find love, and ultimately how we define each of them for ourselves. Expiration Dates is the one readers are waiting for. This looks so cute. I feel like there are not a lot of books about just like dating like usually there are books about like one person meets someone and it's like cute and they get together and it's like end of story but like we get to see her dating process where she like dates these guys and obviously the slip of paper tells her like she's not gonna be with them for very long um so yeah it just makes me excited to uh read this book also um i've noticed i've been sitting here for literally like 12 minutes since you guys have told me that you guys love the long videos i've been making more long videos and i hope you're enjoying them let me know what you think i still am sprinkling them in obviously with short videos too um but i feel like i love long videos and a part of me almost didn't want to share long videos because i felt like you guys didn't like them so that's why i like have always made videos that were like 30 minutes 40 minutes like ish and that was like kind of like the max um but since you guys have been eating up the like hour hour and a half like type videos i'm i'm here for it so let me know if you guys enjoy those types of videos i feel like i do but if you don't let me know i have again been still sprinkling in like the shorter videos but i kind of have been leaning into more long like videos and i hope you're enjoying it so these are all the books that i got just kidding i have one more um we're gonna go pick up bane after we go to a coffee shop but uh yeah, we're gonna go pick them up and then we're gonna read for a coffee at a coffee shop for a little bit. Um, and yeah, kind of get into like the books that we wanna read for this video. Good morning. 
morning, friends. I realized yesterday that I literally never ended up starting this challenge, which is literally the reason why we're all hanging out here. So we are going to start the 24-hour reading challenge today um, and see how long it takes us to like finish the challenge. I love 24-hour reading challenges because I feel like I always end up reading so much more because I'm so much more intentional about my time when I read. So in this challenge, I'm going to start the timer when I'm reading and stop the timer when I'm not. We might take three days to finish. We might take one day to finish. We might take a week. Well, I guess we would take one day to finish because I for sure am not going to like miss out on any sleep. Um, but I feel like this is the most fun way to do this challenge because I need my sleep. And I also feel like it's very attainable for literally anyone to do. So like if you're wanting to do a 24 hour reading challenge, try it. Like just try like starting a timer when you're reading and then when you're not stopping it and see how long it takes you. It could take you a month. Like it doesn't really matter. I feel like the challenge is just like for fun. So I'm going to start off reading Rosewater by Liv Little. This is a queer read. Um, I try to read at least one queer read each month and I feel like I sprinkle in so many different like authors but I try to not only have diverse reads by black authors but I try to have diverse reads with relationships with um like body diversity just like so many different like aspects of diverse reading so um I'm excited to read this one I don't really know if this is like a like heavy heavy romance I feel like this is um, like contemporary fiction with like a sprinkle of romance because it's actually in the contemporary fiction section. So I don't know how I'm going to feel about it because I just got done reading so much literary fiction. Um, but yeah, we will see how I feel about it once we get into it. So uh, let's go ahead and start this and we will start the timer. I'm so excited. I don't know why I'm like so excited to start this. I always do a 24 hour reading challenge, but I'm really excited. <laughs> pretty far into this book i'm on page 85 which i think is chapter like nine or ten just got to chapter 10 and i'm really enjoying this book i do wish that there was a little bit more like dialogue like i feel like i would like it a lot more with more dialogue just because like it's hard for me to connect to characters when i don't feel like i am like getting into like the conversations that they have with like their friends and their family and stuff but i'm really enjoying it and i also really like how um the characters just feel really like real people like they're talking like real people like you guys know what i mean like sometimes you'll read like a book and the characters just kind of feel like they're written. I don't know if anyone else like feels like that, but I feel like that a lot. Like I'll read a book and I'm like, okay, this is very obvious that it's like a Hallmark vibe or it's supposed to be like moody and broody. Like, I don't know, the authors sometimes I feel like have a hard time getting like the realness of humanity and like humans across on the page. Like, I don't know, humans are complex and that's why I feel like um, a lot of books, it is hard to resonate with them because I don't know they're like not written like real people so I'm using um this first form by the way it's a uh, protein powder I'm using that I just got done working out obviously you guys saw and um I'm gonna try not to put hot water into my uh shake because I didn't realize the hot water was on or maybe my hand is cold I can't really tell um I also drink, you guys know, I drink like a ton of protein shakes. I've been trying to do that because I heavy lift um, at like a CrossFit gym Tuesday through Friday. And then I do Pilates on Tuesday night or I'll do it on um, either Thursday or Friday night, depending on my schedule. And I swear I'm so hungry all the time. And I was like going to my gym just like exhausted hungry tired and like one of the my friends that's there she's like well how much protein do you get a day i was like i have no idea and she was like we well, should like track it for a day and i don't track anything because you guys don't know i actually have like a very long tumultuous <laughs> is that the right word relationship with uh food i have had just a really not the best relationship with food and so i try really hard not to like restrict myself and to be like 
very gracious with myself with like eating and stuff um, just because of like my disordered eating history. So um, I just don't track anything. She's like, well, you should just track your protein for a day. So I did that and I was literally getting like 30 to 50 grams of protein a day. And I'm like, well, no wonder I'm exhausted. Like I would eat, you know, oats in the morning, but then like for lunch, I would have like a salad with like berries and stuff. And then for dinner, I like didn't really have like a ton of protein either. So I've added in protein shakes. I've also added in um, the Fairlife protein drinks. And I also get a ton of protein in the evenings. Like I'll make like a steak or a burger or whatever. Um, and I feel like a lot more energized. Um, I actually do have siblings that are vegetarian. I grew up um, with uh, three siblings who are vegetarian and there's six of us. So like half of us were vegetarian, half of us are not, I'm not. But I totally like respect and support friends who are choosing not to eat meat. Like I feel like everyone has to decide what's best for them. Um, and my brother, he actually, if you guys go follow him, he has like an Instagram and he like shows a ton of fitness stuff. And all of his fitness videos are like very inspiring, um, similar to like what I share on like Instagram and stuff. Um, but I, it's like all fitness related. So if you're needing someone to like inspire you to like get up, go to the gym and like things like that, go to his Instagram or his TikTok. But um, he's a vegetarian and he is like super like bulky fit, like all the things. Um, so you don't just have to eat meat to get in protein. I'm not saying that I just, for me, like I love to gobble up some steak, um, but I do support everyone's like choice to decide what's best for their body and like what they want to put in their body. So anyway, um, really enjoying Ro Rose Water. I feel like this book is going to be one that I'm really going to like. Um, I do wish there was more dialogue and I hope that's not like a hang up for me. Um, but I really feel like this book is giving real and it's giving, um, it feels very realistic as I'm reading it. So and it's really enjoyable to read. Um, the girl is definitely down on her luck. It's about a girl who she like gets evicted from her apartment and she has to figure out where to live. So she ends up like moving in with her best friend, but she has like feelings with her for her best friend, Juliet. And Juliet uh, is literally in a relationship. So you see that dynamic um, and it's a true like friendship. Like they're like definitely like, really, really good friends. But there's also some things that they need to like work out in their friendship and they're kind of alluding to like them having like some struggles with each other. Um, they allude to it a little bit, not a ton, but she's also trying to follow her dreams of being like a poet and a writer when her family is not really super supportive of that. Um, so it's just a story of someone trying to live life and life can be hard sometimes. So really enjoying it. Um, I'm gonna go shower, but I'll probably check in with you guys tomorrow because I don't have a ton of time to read today. Um, so I'll probably check in tomorrow whenever I pick up uh, my book again. I finished Rosewater and I'm getting ready to go outside and read for a little bit because like I was literally just telling Brady in the kitchen, I'm like, I need to go outside. Like I need to get outside. I need to take my own advice, which is what I tell you guys all the time to get outside. Even if it's cold, it has been like very chilly here. And I think I like was spoiled because it was really warm for a while. Like literally all last week, it was like super warm. And then all of a sudden it got super, super cold again. And I feel like I just have like, I don't know. I <laughs> I just can't deal with the cold anymore. I'm over it. Um, but I think once I get outside and like watch the sunset, I will be happy once I'm out there. So I'm gonna go out there. Um, but I wanted to give you guys an update on rose water. I really, really enjoyed this a lot. I think I'm gonna rate this one. I can't decide. Probably 3.5. Um, I think that it would have easily been a four star like book if there had been more, more dialogue. There just wasn't. Um, but the story, the ending, I did not expect like all the stuff that happened at the end to happen. Um, and I feel like anytime there's like additional things in the story like that are unexpected, I feel like I'm always like really intrigued and pulled in even more. So really, really like this. And then last night I got on this like binge where I just like randomly started a million and one books. Like literally, you can see how many I started. So I started uh, Broken Clocks by Daniel Allen and I'm only like, I think to page uh, 15, I started Love You Always by Lauren Lane. And I think I'm only on page 10. And then I'm still reading um, 
a love song for Ricky Wilde and I'm only like I think 20 pages in so I've started all of these literally like last night I started um, the two in the middle and then I started how to fail at flirting by Denise Williams today and I really have gotten into that so much I'm already on chapter like 31 I think um, so sometimes I'll do that where I'll start multiple books I always end up finishing them but I just start the like the books that I feel will be the most interesting to me, I'll start them and then whatever really like hooks me is what I stick with. So I'll obviously finish all these, but I started Broken Clocks on my Kindle, so I'll probably read that whenever the sun starts to go down, but let's go and watch the sunset. so many things that I'm loving in this book but one thing that I love in this book is that Jake is so freaking like intentional like I can't even explain it so there's a part um on 226 where his ex kind of comes into the room and she's like not like giving he's not giving his girl the time of day like literally he's not she's not giving his girl the time of day kind of looking over her pretending her, like she's not there and um she like looks up and it's like oh jake like hi like good to see you jake and literally the first thing that he does is puts his arm around her he puts his arm around um i god i literally forget her name what is her name naya puts his arm around naya and he's just like what are you doing here like i'm not interested in talking to you and i think that those subtle things like literally hook me so fast in the books um and they just like i feel like the thing that's keeping me super invested in this book is jake like i have been giggling and smiling while i'm reading this book and it's like over what like over him putting his arm over her shoulder like yes that's literally why i'm giggling like just the small things are the things that i feel like keep me just coming back for more his author just knows how to write detail so there's a point at um 231 and it says um oh, i'm gonna try to find it it says it's been three weeks since i've seen him and i miss the way his breath felt against the back of my neck <laughs> we fell asleep stuff like that that just like, gets me every single time because like I can feel the feelings that the character is feeling and I feel like a lot of our authors have a hard time like getting the writing to make you feel how they feel. I'm just loving this book so much. I think this is one of my favorite things about having a Kindle. Like whenever the sun starts to set and it gets dark and I can't read like a physical book, I can always read my Kindle outside and I do this so much especially in the summer and literally use this every single day it's literally dark out you can see the moon back there i actually have my phone that is like giving light to me so i can like chat with you guys but i'm reading broken clocks um and i'm not like super far into this one but i'm on page 18 and guys this book is so cute i forgot how much i love danielle allen's books and she actually has a new book coming out um in june and i think i love her books because the dialogue is just unmatched like she writes such good dialogue like i always enjoy it and one thing that i always love in books that you don't see often is when like a guy is like i got you like if the girl's like about to cry or she's like about to fall apart and he's just like i got you and he like holds her or whatever like that is like a micro trope that i will never ever get over i swear the little things that authors do in books are what like always pull me in um but again it's pitch black outside and um the moon is out i'm just reading this book i am loving it um i'm gonna stay out here for a while and continue to read because i have a kindle and that's another reason why kindles are literally elite because 
as it gets dark in the summer, you can literally sit on a blanket, just read your little book and like be the main character. I have like music playing. It's such a vibe. Really enjoying this book and I don't think I expected to enjoy it as much as I am because this is a BWWM book, which is like a black woman, white man. Um, and I don't normally read those, not because like I don't love like interracial relationships because I'm obviously in one, but I feel like I want to see women that are black represented as like very strong in their blackness and like loving their culture and I feel like I've always had this idea in my head that if I like read a black woman white man book that I don't know it just wouldn't give that vibe and I feel like whenever I read like black love you definitely get that like there's a lot of like um focus on how like beautiful blackness is and like all the things and so i just never like i've read one um book that was written by anise star i think it's called like one day in paradise or something like that and i really liked it but it didn't really focus on her being black or like struggles that she goes through as a black woman and i feel like that's a large part of why i read books like written about black women because i like to see myself in the writing and um so yeah i just like have never really been drawn to like this uh type of book for that reason because i'm like if i want to read about a black woman i want her to be open about her not even her struggles but just like I want to be able to relate to her in a lot of ways and if I'm not going to read a book about a black woman I could read a book about anybody and not relate to them you know what I mean um I just like to see myself represented in a way that feels like very authentic um so I went into this book not really expecting to love it but I was like let me pick up more BWWM books because I don't read that often and I might be surprised Y'all, this book is so good, like so good. Not only have they like just focused on how as a black woman, she like, you know, has to, in the workplace, she has to like really speak up. And there's this guy that like um, constantly like takes her ideas and he's always like talking over her and undermining her. And just like as a woman in general, like that just like happens. Um, and just, oh, uh, you can, I can literally like, oh as i'm reading this getting sick just by how condescending he is to her and i feel like in the workplace like we know what that's like like i do not miss corporate like anything for that reason because there were so many times where like men would literally undermine me or i would say something and they would be like oh thanks for contributing like oh like that's like nice that you said something and then they would literally like say the exact same thing that i said but they acted like they like made it up um so there's just so many things that i feel like I'm really connecting with and also uh, she references and I think that this is a thing that I don't feel like I would normally see in BWWM books which I am seeing it in this one which is amazing um, there's a point where this like older guy he comes up and he's kind of like racist and not kind of no he like for sure is so he definitely is and he says something to uh, her and she's like in a workspace so she has to kind of like internalize it and she can't like really say anything back like she can't clap back she's like in a workplace and he's like an older like ceo type to guy, type guy um like william the third or something and that happens in front of jake who's the guy who he is obviously white that she's like talking to and he just like asks her about like her experience like does this happen often like i'm so sorry that you have to deal with that he like gets pissed and he like balls up his fist and like wants to go like fight this guy um and she's like it's not worth it and like i feel like just those small moments added are so important because I feel like Brady and I, my husband, who is obviously white, he is someone that, like, I don't know, just is, I don't want to say hot-headed because he's definitely not that, but, like, he's the perfect balance between, like, I'm a protector, I'm going to take care of you, like, but even though you don't really need to be taken care of, I still want to, but also, like, I'm a cinnamon roll boy because I'm going to give you soft kisses on your forehead and, like, all the things, and that is a hard balance to find in books, and Jake is literally that to a T in this book, literally, like, he is, like, wants to, like, fight anyone who's trying to hurt her, but he's also, like, such a good communicator, like, he is everything like he is literally such a good book boyfriend i'm really enjoying this and i also am i don't know i feel like i relate to this in a way because like brady and i have had so many conversations over the what 12 years that we've been together 
for 11 years and uh, it's just like I don't know it's just second nature now because like we are so open with like the struggles of me being a black woman or just like struggles of being a woman in general and I feel like those conversations you don't see often enough in books and I think they're so important if you're like with someone even just sharing your struggles in general in any capacity I think is like really important but I feel like a lot of the time we miss those specific things it like when we're reading books so it was really nice because it was just a sprinkle. It wasn't anything that was like taking over the book because again, I love my fluffy little romances and this is definitely that. But I think adding it in there, just a small dose of it is like, okay, like I get it. Like the author, she gets it. And that's like what I want to see in a book. But I'm so close to being done. I am on chapter 44 on page 311. And I've read like a really good amount um, so far. I am at uh, 10 hours and 43 minutes, so you guys can see that I'm pretty far with that. Um, I will say I did start um, another book. I started The Wrong Kind of Weird last night, which I am loving so far. It's super cute. Um, I also started Broken Clocks, but this is what I was reading on my Kindle, so I have my Kindle here with me. Um, I don't even remember like what I got to, like what chapter I got to on here, so I'm going to pull it up so I can see. Um, I got to chapter three, so I'm not super far into this, but I'm really enjoying Broken Clocks. It is just fun. Like, it is really fun. It is spicy, but, like, it's one of those spicy books that's, like, the guy is, like, so passionate and, like, so, like, head over heels for the girl that, like, I don't mind the spice when it's like that. Like, if it feels like the person is just, like, so in love, like... And it's not giving like, oh, this is just like a one night stand hookup. Like, I don't know. I love books like that. And when it's like passionate love, like, so it's really good. And also tons of dialogue. So those are the three books that I'm reading. Um, but I also am reading, let me see if I can find it. Um, <laughs> love You Always by Lauren Lane. I didn't really read that much yesterday. And then where's the other book? I think it fell on the side. I'm reading a love song for Ricky Wilde. I don't know where the heck that went because I also brought that one too. But we're going to go inside to this bookstore. It's a bookstore and coffee shop. Oh, you guys are sitting literally on a love song for Ricky Wilde. <laughs> um, but we're going to go inside of this bookstore and we are going to do some book shopping. It's an indie bookstore. I love supporting indie bookstores. I try to do that every single video if I can. Um, granted, this bookstore is literally an hour and a half for me. So that's something that I, you know wish wasn't the case. I wish that I had an indie bookstore in my town that had new books, which I don't. We do have a bookstore that has used books, but they're like super old used books. Like, like old, old, like nothing within the past like five years usually. Like a lot of them are very old books, but I do usually find good thrillers whenever I go in there. So maybe I'll do like a little vlog um, going in there, but um, we're going to go into this bookstore. I love this bookstore so much. They have book clubs here. Um, this is like kind of a college town. So like the vibe in there is like super fun. Um, I just don't know which book I'm going to bring in because I want to read all of them. Um, I think maybe I'll bring in my Kindle and maybe, maybe this, or maybe I'll finish this out here like real quick and then go in because I'm so close to being done and it's kind of comfy on me, honestly in the car. Um, I only have, I think like, where am I at? I'm pretty close. Yeah. I only have like, um, like 15 pages or something. So I might actually finish this before I go inside and then just bring in the books that I plan to read whenever I go inside. And then we're going to do some book shopping because I mean, we can't go into a bookstore that is also a coffee shop and not go to the bookstore part. So we're going to do that too.
guys know how I always say that I can tell if something's gonna be like a five star book? I feel like this book is gonna be a five star book. Like I just, I just get, I have that feeling. I feel like usually I can tell by like the page 50 mark and I'm on page 55 and I can't get enough of this book. Like I wanna keep reading it. Um, it's giving love and other words vibes. Like it feels very much like that, like that nostalgic, like, story and you guys know love um not love in other words love in other words is like a book that i love but that's not what i was gonna say you guys know that um the friends to lovers trope is my favorite trope but it is not done right like 90 percent of the time i feel like people just can't get it right because you have to really create something to like keep the reader interested because you obviously know that like they were together when they were younger and they had this like deep love so you have to like make the reader believe that like maybe one they won't get together or two there's something that like pull them apart like that's so bad that you like are breaking this undeniable like soulmate connection and like it has to be believable um and this book also has like some other side plots like family stuff going on and like so other stuff outside the romance i will say it's written in a way that's almost like um it does it's not like hard to read by any means um and i feel like some of it like the way it's written i'm just kind of like eh, i don't know if i'm like obsessed with the writing style but then again i'm just like getting into this book and um i'm only 50 pages in but i just had to say that like right off the bat i feel i feel and this like i so the last five star book that i had was this could be us by kennedy ryan which i figured that it would be because i love her books before i let go it was a five star read for me and then the one before that was into the dark by jessa hastings which again is a part of a series um the fifth book i figured that it would be five stars because again it's like part of the series so i haven't had a book that's just like a standalone or like a new author new like writing that is like even hit close to the mark of like a five star read so this is getting me really excited and also this is um a book that i haven't really heard many people talk about um one of you guys actually dm me and you uh told me to read this and then one of you guys messaged me on insta or er, on um youtube and you said that i should read this book this is a like small town like love story which i feel like you don't see that often with like black love stories um at least i haven't been able to find them or if you do it's like super fluffy um but this is set in um beverly mills georgia which i don't think that's a real place but like it definitely gives like the south like um the yes ma'am no sir like type of vibe like they eat dinner together like that kind of thing they live in these like big houses and um like the town is like very much small town but it also has like um a like found family vibe even though they're con like really close with their family um they have these friendships that are like literally so close that they are also like family to them and so i think the rest of the books in the series are about the friends in the group i am just eating it up absolutely eating it up i'm like i don't want to get up and like go um back to the vet to get bane because this book is so good it's just it's so good um and again, I have not felt like this in a while. It's about Parker and uh, Jackson. And you're kind of getting like a then and now timeline. So like you're getting the then timeline when they like met, I think they were like eight or something. And they like had this super deep connection. First they were like friends, like truly just best friends first, which I love because you also don't feel like you see that often. Like usually they jump right into the lovers part and they don't give like the friendship, which I think is why I love Love Another Word so much because they actually built a friendship first. And that's how this book was. Like they built a friendship, um, they, like built like a really deep connection first and then um obviously got together after that but yeah loving it so much um i also think that the setting for reading can also make the reading experience better so like i've been outside obviously on this blanket and i almost didn't come outside because i thought it would be like a little chilly um just because like it's kind of windy today but i brought like a blanket to lay under and then a blanket to lay on and the blanket i'm laying on is actually like really fussy <laughs> I'm so glad that I came outside today. I almost didn't do it because of the weather. So um, I wanna encourage you guys, if you haven't gotten outside today, even if it's like chilly, go outside, like get a blanket, get a coat. I went outside with a coat last night, as you guys saw with um, my scarf and stuff. And like, I just forgot how much I love being outside and how much it makes the reading experience better. 
and some of you guys have said like you like reading inside better and like I totally understand but for me turning on like vibey music and just like being under a blanket under the sun I try to sit like by um like a body of water of some kind because I feel like it just like adds to the vibe and like I try to sit in grass if I can because it's like more comfortable I also use this blanket which I will link this one it's a little pricey um but on this side it's actually fuzzy I don't know if you guys can see that on this side it's super fuzzy it's like a down blanket and on this side you can hear that it's like slick and so whenever it's rainy or if it's kind of like damp on the ground which i feel like most days it is um you don't have to worry about it like sinking seeping through the blanket to you um because it has this like extra layer and i use this all year long now if the ground is like wet like it just rained i wouldn't use it on that um I usually just use it if it's like damp or if it like rained the day before and it's like the next day like I'll use it um but yeah I just I love this blanket it is again kind of pricey it's from Eddie Bauer but um it's my most used blanket outside and then I'm underneath this one right here we don't even really need to be underneath it because it's so sunny that I'm actually getting kind of hot um but this uh sweater does have like holes in it so I don't know I'm just I'm loving the vibe out here and this is making me excited for like summer and spring obviously it's spring now but it hasn't really felt like it lately so it's making me super excited for warmer weather good morning I'm sitting here reading my kindle I'm reading broken clocks I'm 25 percent in I always read my kindle whenever um I like wake up in the morning because like if I'm eating or whatever like I just like to be hands-free I also was putting my hair back because I am doing something with my hair today I've never done so you guys will obviously see it later um but I am really enjoying broken clocks and I love whenever I'm like reading multiple books that I'm enjoying because like sometimes when I'm reading multiple books like I'm re if I'm reading like four or five books and only one of them is like holding my attention like a lot I always naturally gravitate towards that one but I'm reading so many right now that I love um I did end up finishing how to fail at flirting so I'm gonna bring that over to give you guys a little review of this book I really um enjoy this one definitely rating this one at four stars I think that this book is um such a fun fluffy book it has like a few like serious topics but for the most part it's just like pure fluff and i already ordered another book from her i ordered um the fastest way to fall by her i think that's like one of her other books that a lot of people recommended i own um a book of hers but i'm actually giving it to a free library um i'd already planned on giving it to a free library and it's a different book uh i think it's like do you take this man or something like that so um I want to also like allow people in the free library to get books that they would enjoy and you guys know I like to put popular books in there so anyway ordered another book really excited to read that because this was just so fun and I feel like I've had a hard time finding like fluffy fun books that actually hold my attention like a lot of the time I'll be like oh three three and a half stars like kind of predictable which isn't bad like when it's predictable I feel like if it's predictable it just kind of like is gonna be that like it just most happy fluffy books i feel like are kind of predictable but i always need like something else to like hold my attention and this one definitely did so four stars loved love 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 this one um i also realized i never ended up showing you guys the books that i ended up getting um yesterday at the bookstore so i'm gonna show you guys that in a second but i was uh <laughs> talking to Kalila last night because I'm getting my hair done and she's like gotten the thing done to her hair that I'm getting done to my hair you might know what it is I don't know um I've never done it before to my hair so I kind of want to surprise you guys um whenever it just like gets done so you can see it but she's giving me all these tips but that's not even why we were talking she randomly texted me and we like talk but I'm not like a big texter like I just am so busy it's hard for me to have like full-on conversations like every single day over text um especially if I'm like texting multiple people and I always like to give like really thought out answers and stuff whenever I'm texting not just be like yeah like or okay I like to like really have a hold a conversation so sometimes a voice note but like it's just hard in general um to like talk to your friends and talk to your family and stuff like over text so like I'm not a huge texter I will text back but like I'm just 
I'm not a huge texter. And I think part of it is because I answer every single one of your messages, like every single DM on Instagram. And there's like 120,000 people over there. And every single message on TikTok, which there are 175,000 people over there. And I, if I don't respond to every single message on or comment on YouTube, I will um, leave like a little heart and then I'll try to respond to all of them, but I read all of them and I like heart all of them. Um, and then on Instagram comments and TikTok comments, like I try to respond to those, but I always, always, always respond to every single message on Instagram and every single message on TikTok. So um, I think that that's part of the reason why texting is also hard because I'm like constantly like having conversation with people all day. But anyway, she texted me and like the last time we had talked was... Um, on when did we talk we talked on monday because um she or we talked on sunday she was like have a safe flight blah blah and i was like thank you like i hope you have the best birthday like that kind of thing and then monday she texted me and was like um this weekend was so great she's like i'm praying for you because um like i told her when we were in new york that like bane might like have cancer again and stuff and like was kind of bummed and then I like hearted it and then um, she texted me on Tuesday and sent me this long message after watching the vlog, just like being so, so kind. And like, I just was like, oh my gosh, like how did I find such a great friend? Because I feel like it's been years like of me like really struggling in like high school and college with like friendships. And I think I've been pretty open about that. And in the last few years is when I've like really, really like honed in on like my friendships. And she um, like sent this long message and I was like, thank you, you're so sweet, like all this stuff. Um, and then um, we were like texting on Wednesday because uh, we were talking about like a workout because like both of us work out in the morning. And then yesterday she texted me and was like, hey, I just want to check in and see how you're doing. Obviously you don't have to give me any updates. I just wanted to let you know, I thought about you and I'm hoping everything is going well. Um, and then she also said like the book that she was starting um, the next week that I recommended. And that just like means the absolute world to me because I feel like I've always been the friend that's like checked in on people um, or been there for people. Like one of my friends, when my dad was literally in hospice, one of my friends was having like a birthday um, like party thing in Vegas and I told her I would go and I'm like a woman of my word. Like I will not like cancel plans. Like I will show up like if I say I'm gonna be there. And it was only two of us going because a lot of people had like bailed out. And so I was like, oh, like I need to go. Like I don't want to cancel. And like I didn't tell her that my dad was in hospice. I didn't tell anyone. And um, I didn't share anything about him until like after he passed. And um, I ended up going to Vegas and I was just like not in like the best mood. She's like, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, like my dad's like in hospice. And she's like, oh my God. And I was like, but let's not talk about it because it's like your birthday. And like, this is a friend I've had for like, um, I don't know how long, like, maybe 12 years or something like that or 14 and I know she would have understood if I was like hey like I can't go like I need to stay with my dad like he's on hospice he only has so much time left and I was only there for like a day and a half um but still like that's time and I have just really been thinking about how like I think that I almost feel like my friends will only want to be my friends if I show up for them in a certain way and the way I've always shown up for them is like being the person who like listens who is like there for every event like I don't miss birthdays I don't miss like anything um and like that's very conditional friendship like that is very like transactional friendship and like I think I'm realizing now like I don't want that and I think I'm realizing it now because I'm at the point where like I actually cannot give out to anyone right now like I I am so like, so low, um, low, what's the word? Like, I just don't have the capacity to give because I barely have the capacity to give to myself right now. And I think that's just because there's so many life changes. Like, you know, this coming Sunday is my first, uh, well, not this coming Sunday, but the Sunday, like a week from today will be, sorry, my allergies, I haven't taken my allergy pill this morning. Um, but it'll be, the first holiday that like my family would have celebrated together without my dad. Um, it'll also be the first, well, I guess not the first holiday my family would have celebrated without my dad because there was Christmas, but it'll be the first one where my mom isn't here. And so like, I don't have any plans with my siblings that are in town and I've thought about doing something with them. And I think I'm going to go see my brother who I think I share with you guys. He like, 
um, is like an hour and a half away because I don't want him to be alone. And I had to turn down the um, like light or whatever on the camera because the sun is coming in and I didn't want it to like blow out too much. But um, I don't want him to be alone. And he's the one who like was really struggling like mentally and stuff. And um, we like really have just poured so much love into him over the last few years. But like obviously my mom isn't gonna be here. So like, you know, he's not able to come here. So I'm gonna go to him. Um, but then my other sisters and my niece like are gonna be in my hometown and like I'm not gonna see them. And this will just be the, like, the very first holiday where like it feels very different. Cause even with Christmas, like my mom was like obviously still in town. So like we all got together, we still brought presents. Um, we all talked about memories of like dad and stuff and it felt different and it felt like there was a missing piece, but we still were all like close knit and together so we could like lean on each other. And this holiday is not gonna be that. So um, we're gonna go I think to Brady's parents' house and um, like hang out there after I go see my brother, but it's just, it's just gonna be different. And I know I'm not the only one who's going through life changes that like, life is just lifing and it's just like different. And I think in this season, I just don't have the capacity to give out. And I think I'm realizing like, not even realizing, but like it is very apparent who is like um, able to not have that transactional like version of our friendship and who is like able to like, I know I know people have their own things. So it's not like I'm expecting people to do anything for me. Um, but I think it's just like very telling for me of what friendship looks like now versus like how it used to look. So, um, that text like meant the world to me and it's like just very, very sweet. And I feel really grateful for my friends, like in this season, like so grateful. And I want to remind you, if you are struggling with friendships and maybe you haven't had the best friends, like let go of them. It is better to be without friends than have friends in your life that like are not good ones because you're putting so much energy into them when really without them, you could just put it into yourself, put it into your hobbies. You could put it into things that you enjoy and you could put it into like trying to cultivate new friendships. Like I always say, if you're trying to make friends, you like have to do things and like, I think you have to do things alone or try to do things alone. I think that that's one of the easiest ways to make friends. Um, go to book clubs, go to um, bookstores, go to coffee shops, go to places where you think the friends that you would want would be. Like, I also feel like that's very similar for like dating. Like if you're going to the club every weekend and you're like, oh my God, like I can't meet a good guy who like doesn't want to go out all the time. It's like, well, you met him in the club. So it's like you kind of created that space like because you were always there and like of course he is gonna want to go to the club a lot because like that's where you met versus like if you're in a bookshop or a bookstore or a coffee shop or let's say you go to a ceramics class you might meet like an artsy person or someone who's like really into books and like reading because like that's where they hang out in the same way that you hang out in like certain spaces so um you know if you go to the park and like run or like you know, have a little picnic in the park or whatever. You might find someone who wants to be out in nature. If you go hiking, um, if you go on nature trails, you're gonna find someone who like really wants to be connected to like, you know, mountains and I don't know, nature. So I don't know. I really just want to encourage you to step outside of your comfort zone this year. That's really what has helped me build these friendships. Like I had never met Kalila until this year. And like, we had kind of like chatted online, but I was just like, hey, you know, um, I would love to like, you know, for you to go on this trip. And then like, obviously she went to the Smoky Mountains, but like Alexis, who I hung out with, we met, I think three years ago. Um, I had never met her before, like inviting her to hang out. Um, my closest friend, Nancy, um, I literally met her when I was, uh, where was I? I was, um, at a trivia night and I went by myself and not for the trivia, but there was like a little event before and like um, they were talking about like downtown stuff and like different businesses and I just like wanted to hear. So I went by myself, but she was going for the trivia night that was starting afterward. And um, I got in line to like get a drink and she was in line. I was like, oh my God, I love your top. And she was like, thanks. Like, I love your outfit. And then we just got to talking and she was like, oh, I'm a med student. I just like came here and I'm, I'm uh, going through like residency and stuff. And then we hit it off and that was like three years ago. And Taylor, um, you guys have seen her in the vlogs many, many times. I met her literally because someone was like, hey, there's this girl that I think you would vibe with. Like you should like hang out with her. 
I literally DM'd her, I kid you not, on Instagram. We have no mutual friends. Like, we're different ages. Like, I literally DM'd her and was like, hey, like, you want to come over to my house? <laughs> Thankfully, she wasn't a serial killer or something, but, like, that's how we met. And so all of these friends that I've, like, shared are all, like, new and recent friends. And I don't think I ever thought that I could build friendships in my um 30s i think i always thought i had to like make all my friends in my 20s or like my teens and they would need to come with me which i still have a lot from that too like obviously alex i've been friends with for years and i feel like this year more than ever we've really like cultivated our friendship um in ways that we haven't before uh, my friend ebony like we have known each other for years um like i think we met 12 14 years ago um and like she's just like someone who like she has a little one and like we are always like staying connected and even if we're not like hanging out and like talking all the time like we still are like in constant connection with each other and like there's just so many other friends like um Nikkei, you guys will see whenever we go to mexico we're gonna go to mexico in a few months um we were friends in high school and i'd probably say in the last like two years we've gotten like a lot closer because we both met moved back to the same town and before that we like lived in different towns because we went to different schools um and she would like come up to visit me in Kirksville like when I was in college she went like twice um and we'd always like meet up when we were back in town but we didn't get like super super close because like we were in different colleges like five hours away um but we both grew up here in this town so um I don't know I think like reaching out to old friends is also good like not friends that you like have stopping friends with like let them go but people maybe you like were in somewhat connection with and like you would maybe want to get to know better um because people as they get older they're going to be totally different than they used to be so i don't know i feel like um i have so many old like friendships that i've really like you know leaned into even more but i also have so many new friendships that i'm really grateful for too so um yeah that's my little friendship chat but let's get into the books that i got from um in the bookstore the first book that i got is um i guess i'll show you guys this one first razor blade tears by s.a cosby i've never read anything from him before um this is a black author who writes thrillers and on the back it says a black father a white father two dead sons and a quest for revenge and redemption so they're trying to find the person that killed their two sons so many people have said that this book is good and i don't know how i've never read anything from s.a cosby i think it's because like, remember I was telling you guys, I've kind of had that gap of, like, reading, like, authors that came out in, like, um, the early years. Um, whenever I was in, like, high school, I was reading mostly young adult books, and then I went to college, and I, like, wasn't reading for fun at all. So there's, like, years of books that I just have not read, um, and authors that I know nothing about. So, like, he is a well-renowned author, um, but... I just have never read anything from him and I'm trying to get into his writing now. Kind of like Eric Jerome Dickey, um, Omar, Tyrese, like all those older authors I'm trying to get into. And I don't want to say older because they're really not old. They just like, I missed that era because I was in college when a lot of those books were like popular. I also got um, A Perfect Vintage by Chelsea Fagan. I almost didn't get this, but I kept looking at it multiple times. And I was like, okay, I need to get this because I keep being gravitate, I keep gravitating towards it. But it's this old money, younger men, one intoxicating summer. And it's about a girl who um, she like, I think is in the French countryside and like she is child free, she's single. And then she ends up meeting this super young guy and kind of like falling for him. And they kind of have like a thing. And it just looks really good. I feel like it looks like a fun summer book. And in the bookstore, they have all these little like um, blurbs at the bottom of where they put the books that the um, bookstore like people will like put in there as to like what they thought of the book. And someone was like, this was fun. It was sexy. Um, it's a great summer read. So I'm like, bet I'm literally taking that home. So these are the two books that I got. I'm going somewhere fun today with a friend. I don't know if it's gonna be a full vlog by itself or it's just gonna be part of this vlog. Um, I'm leaning more towards it being part of this vlog because um, I feel like it would be fun, but I also like don't really know. If it's like super like a long chat and like hangout like it usually is, it'll probably be its own vlog. Like, I just don't know. So I will keep you guys posted. Kind of like how I did um, in New York, like I, wasn't sure if it was gonna be part of the vlog I was already filming, like the literary fiction one, or if it was gonna be like a totally different one. Um, I'm just gonna play it by ear. So anyway, let's go and get my hair done. Before we go, I have to show you guys, um, one, the time, like uh, how much I've read so far. And I also have to show you 
I literally bring books with me everywhere. I bring all of these. Like I literally, from room to room, will walk in with all these books. Like I know I'm not gonna read all these. Why do I bring them all? I don't know. I just have to have choices. Is anyone else like this? Hello guys. Uh, Hi y'all. I'm back. You guys do something different. <laughs> Oh, this is your first time showing? Yeah, they haven't seen it. Oh, yeah. wow. She's giving hashtag black girl magic. Yes. She's oh giving great. She's giving vacation girl. Yes, I love it. I told her it's a vibe. I would feel like you when I do this. Yeah. Like every time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's so different. I've never seen her in braids. Well, I guess you've never seen uh, yourself in braids. No, I got braids like as a kid, um, but it was like with my real hair, mm -hmm. and then like my mom would braid it and put like little ball ball things mm -hmm. on the bottom. But, like it wasn't the same vibe. Like yes. they were like dookie braids, not like yes. cute braids. So. It's definitely giving grown woman. Thank you. And I love it. I love it so much. What have you been reading lately? I've been in kind of a rut, oh. but I've read Hate by Tate James, Liar by Tate Oh, yeah, because your book club. Yeah. Um, what else did I read? My gut reads doesn't work, so. Um, it's hard to remember them, I feel like, after a while. Yeah. It all just blurs together. Is Liar by Tate James, too? Mm -hmm. It's a series. <gasps> Which one was the best, first or second? Uh, MK, Madison K, she gets on my freaking nerves in both, <laughs> so. It's a, it's like it, it hooks you, but the main character gets on your nerves. Mm. It's like the whole time supposed think, to be because she's nerves. so freaking privileged. It's like, girl, I understand you've been through some stuff in your life, and that you know, some stuff didn't happen. But her just attitude, she's so annoying, and she has horrible communication skills. Ooh, so you know, I don't like me. stuff yeah. like that. I do not like people with poor communication skills because. Mm -hmm. But she is young. She's only 18. I have to remember that, Alex. She's only 18. Yeah. But I don't really relate to her at all. So <laughs> So the story is good, though, but just, she's just not good? She's annoying. I would never okay. be friends with her in real life. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think what else I read. Uh, Y'all, I cannot remember. March was not a good month for me, reading month. Really? Well, you read the whole um, Eisenberg Effect, That was you? last month. Was it really last month? Did I read The Teacher this month? I think you did, because no, you were reading it in like Chicago. Oh wait, was that last month? That was last month. Oh my god. I don't know if you if you guys don't know this, like we don't live near each other. We live two and a half hours. I say <laughs> this say all this the time. Because people are always like, oh my god, you should see each other more. I'm like, we live two and a half hours away from each yes. other. Like we don't live next door. No, we don't. <sighs> yeah. You're feeling that hair boy. I am You're feeling it. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm just like moving it. <laughs> I'll be doing this all day. <laughs> She'll know how to act. Boy. I know. I was in a salon that was just like Wow, like I love my hair. I was like, who am I? There was a guy who was in there who was like getting, um, I don't know what he was getting, and then there were like an uh, older woman and like a really young girl. And I kept looking in the mirror, I was like, who am I? They probably thought girl. I was so cocky. I tell people that is why the Lord made our hair grow that way and yep. not this way. Because yep. our attitude. Yes. It, yep. Black women with straight <laughs> hair, it just is not. The combo <laughs> is lethal. Black. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now we will feel ourselves way too much. Y'all see, I do the invisible hair hair touch. Yeah. Well, no, I, I always say if God like made me be able to dance, like oh, it'll mm -hmm. be over. It'll be, it'll be <laughs> over because He's given me so many other blessings, but that's not one. <laughs> and like if I had that, I would be acting. I would be acting up. Like yeah, I can't dance a fool. either. Yeah, I, I can. Dance. No, mm -mm. I can't dance. I can't. I can sing. Mm -hmm. I can't dance. But if you could dance, like, man. I'm trying to think what else is something that black people can do. I can't cook. Yes, you can. Sweetie. Really? <laughs> I was married to a Caucasian man for 10 years. His, my food was spicy. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, my yeah, God. No. Well, so I used to not be able to cook very well, and now I feel like I'm a lot better. But I literally cooked. It was this guy, Rod, I'll never forget. It was like 10 years ago. Um, mm -hmm. Came over to the apartment, and we were all going to eat together. It's me, Rod, Brady, and Shay. And I was like, so what do you guys think of, like, the pasta? And he goes, it's a little bland. <laughs> After that, I was like, nope, it's done. Like, I, I gotta fix this. I gotta I'm fix done. this. So that was, like, 10 years ago. So I've gotten my act together since then. But, mm. man, I I was like, because usually people be like, oh, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, it's fine. No, he literally was like, oh, it's a little bland. Lord bless her. In front of people, I was like, oh, man. so embarrassed. I'm really trying to figure out what I read. I don't remember. I, I've only, and I forgot my freaking Kindle. <gasps> yes, I went to get it out of my purse and I was sitting there waiting. Mm. I said, oh. When do you ever forget your Kindle? Never. I was so mm. sad. I don't even read physical copies anymore. I buy them for fun. 
Whatever. I'm going to read This Is Us on, on the physical copy, which is going to okay. be torture. But, uh... Oh, yeah! I just right prefer here. my Kindle. <laughs> Look what she got for me, y'all. I was supposed to go, but no, I'm, I'm a mom. <laughs> It was really, it, I thought that it wouldn't be I fun. Did it was really fun. Did you get it signed? Yeah, it's in the front. It's right here. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want? No, it's great. It's just <laughs> Look, I got my book and it's signed. I, uh. Because <laughs> it says her, just her initials. What do yeah. you want her to say? Kennedy Bryant. <laughs> you gotta show him the signature. <laughs> You were so disappointed when you opened it. Well, yeah, when I write my book and y'all come to my book signing, but it probably gets exhausting signing your name so much. That line, I don't have a stamp. I was in group seven, and group seven probably had like 20 people. Dang. And that was the last group. So, like, all the other groups were, I mean, packed. Yeah, like, so I, I stayed that. there. She started the event, started at seven, it ended at like 8 30 ish. And I think they started like the signings at nine. I did mm -hmm. not get home until midnight. Yeah, dang. Yeah, yeah. She I think signed I for like you. two hours or something. I was dang, like, I was so salty though when I saw your stories. And I was like, I'm supposed to be with her. <laughs> I was so mad. But you got to do it by yourself. Yeah. So that was a good experience. You would have loved it though. I know. I've been eating it up. <laughs> I've been trying to take pictures with everybody. <laughs> you know, I love that. I love the attention now. Give it to me. <laughs> Have You're that wild. Drama. <laughs> At the library. Oh, he's adorable. Which we don't normally go to the library. We normally go to the bookstore, obviously. But we wanted to try something new um, because... <laughs> she wanted to try something new. Well, okay. Did you find any books when you went to the library before? Or you just went with the boys, right? Well, because I didn't you see you brought anything home. When you first get a library home. card... Y'all ain't gonna be able to do hard as hell. I know. <laughs> when you first get a library card, you can only rent two books for the really? first. It's like a probation period. The first three months. What the heck? How are you so, gonna put a hold on books? And imagine if I had six kids. Yeah. So what they if we all wanted one. a book? Mm. No, because you can only rent two. So all six of my kids couldn't even got. Well, I ain't got six kids, <laughs> but all six of them wanted to get anything. Yeah, only Dang. two. Yeah, so I couldn't. I wanted to rent um, First Lie Wins. Is mm. that it? Mm -hmm. Because they had that one, but I couldn't rent it because Bobo wanted a book and then gave one and one so mm, that's mother life dang yeah good that mom. book is thirty dollars yeah and the last thirty dollar book i bought i didn't like it what was that one haunting adeline oh, okay yeah you and i won't that. be doing that again <laughs> no I, more i read um my dark vanessa oh yeah so was it good oh good like so good i was but ain't it sad it's very sad okay can i just say something you if you're reading contemporary literary fiction like is are you okay at home because <laughs> I read literary fiction for a week and I was like, how do people do this all the time? Like it, like all the books I feel like we're focusing on the disparities of the United States, which we are well aware oh of, like racism, See? sexism, you know, all the isms. And I was like, we get it. Like the world we live in is not the best, but I don't need to read it. Yes. And like reading it and not having a happy ending with like almost all the books, I was just like, please comment below. Like, why do you like reading those? Because I did enjoy My Dark Vanessa, but I could not read that all the time. And also, I tell people all the time when they're like, why don't you read this type of book? My my real life has enough drama. Exactly, yeah. And, and toxic mess. Yes. Well, not relationships, of course. But, um, <laughs> Look at I, your smile when you said relationships. But I'm saying, like, I don't, you know, I read about a lot of toxic Yeah. <laughs> smile. But... <laughs> <laughs> but I said to say, I don't want to read about my real life. Yes. I like to escape my reality. Yes. That is the whole reason that Why I you read. read. Same. I don't yeah. want to read about, I don't know, whatever my dark Vanessa was. Yeah. I got the book. Is she going to be sitting there for a while? <laughs> yeah, you have to read that when you're not. Like, I I was just like, oh my God. Yeah, I don't terrible. know why you did that to yourself, sis. I don't know. <laughs> you guys know I've been down bad. I, I was reading all these books during the same week. Someone commented, they go, oh, maybe you should start reading happy books. I'm like, yeah, maybe I should. <laughs> yeah, because my dark Vanessa. Yeah, it was so sad. Like, because yeah. she was, and it says this on the back of the book, she was like with a guy who's like in his 40s mm -hmm. and she was 15. And it goes from her whole life, from 15 years old, I think, to, like, 30-something. So yeah, and it's so sad. Like, but it, it shows you why that happens, because, mm -hmm. like, literally while I was reading the book, like, I was thinking, well, this guy isn't that bad, because of the way that, like, 
he would manipulate her. Mm -hmm. So, like, throughout the book, you're kind of starting to apologize for him in a way, which, like, is the reason why the author probably wrote it that way. And then you start to hate him because, obviously, like, he sucks. Um, but I feel like it gives me empathy for people who do get groomed mm -hmm. because the whole book, she's like, I'm not a victim, I'm not a victim because, like, I wanted to be with him. Like, I had all these feelings for him. But it's like, girl, you didn't know you're 15. Yeah. Like, he's grooming you. That's what grooming is. Like, you feel like mm -hmm. that person is your person. So... It was so good. Um, yeah, no. I Very hard. I won't be sad. reading that, yo. No, I feel like people with kids especially, that would be so hard. Yeah, I can't read. I've learned that, too. I cannot read stuff that is about kids being kidnapped, mm -hmm. touched, mm -hmm. trafficked. I can't. It just makes me even... I'm already paranoid as it is. Yeah. It just makes me even more paranoid. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, no, I'm good. I, I can't do it. Another book. This book is so good. Love you always. I think it's gonna be five Love stars. Love you always. For real? I think so. And I was telling them that I haven't had a five star. So, like, that book was five stars for me, which I was like, I kind of thought it would be because mm -hmm. before I let go was five stars. I love Katie Ryan's writing. And then Into the Dark by Jessa Hastings. It was which six stars. It was six stars because I'm like, I love her writing. I've not had a, like, standalone <laughs> or just, like, new author have a five star mm -hmm. for me in, I can't even tell you the last mm -hmm. time. This book. So I have black author set in a small town. Should I order it right now? You should literally order it right now. It's set in a small town. It only has, I think it has less than 100 reviews. Or maybe less than 200. And one of you guys actually DM'd me and you were like, please read this book. It's so good. It's set in Beverly Mills. And Beverly Mills? Yeah, that's the town. Beverly, 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 Hills. Beverly Mills, Georgia. And they have these big houses and there's this friend group. Um, but it's a friends to lover story. She falls okay. in love with him when she's literally, it says on the back, um, their lives have been intertwined since childhood, but something tears them apart. Lauren Lane. Lauren Lacey, sorry. Um, there's two covers. You can get this cover or you can get the cover with like the girl on the front. Mm, um, I don't want her. You what? I don't want her. <laughs> you don't want her. Um, <laughs> dang. <laughs> no, I don't see that. Your cover. But this reminds me of, I kid you not. I oh, it's on Kindle Unlimited. <gasps> Oh, period. Start it. Start it. Like, it. It reminds me of Love in Other Words. It's a series. Yes. <gasps> okay. It literally reminds okay. me. It gives me that comfort read feeling. And like, it goes. I'm going to open this because it's a little hot it's in a, here. It's a little toasty. It's a little hot. It's a little toasty. Um, But, ooh, that feels good. <laughs> it does. I was burning up. Oh my God, the sweater on. Yeah, like, I was like, dang, ooh. how are you handling that? Um, But it reminds me so much of Love in Other Words because they're like in love something tears them apart mm -hmm. you don't really know what but you can tell their love and connection is like undeniable mm -hmm. and i can almost always tell when something's gonna be five stars because if i get to the 50 page mark usually i can know by the 50 page mm -hmm. mark and now i'm 55 dang so it's gonna be five stars i feel like you. it is yeah okay i yeah. haven't finished it but i feel like it Let is write that down so I'm i have not like people ask me all the time like do you have a book that reminds you of love in other words that's by a black author and i literally say every time i'm like no when, i don't because there's people nothing want book wrecks, i send them to you <laughs> I told him I'm not your bookstagrammer that's gonna you know book rent. Girl, you're a bookstagrammer. I, I don't care what you say. She tells people she's not a bookstagrammer. Like, do you tell people you're not a booktuber? No, I don't know what I tell people, child. But <laughs> bookstagrammer. Like, no, I don't know. I, I said <laughs> <laughs> you were definitely a bookstagrammer. And uh, booktuber. Uh what was I about to say? Okay, I wrote it down. I'm gonna start it. Well, I'm in the middle of a book when I finish that book. I'll yeah, if you're looking it. for a comfort read mm -hmm. like this, I feel like it's gonna give that. It reminds me so Because I was about to reread words. Archer's voice. Were you really? Yes, because I was like, I need something that's just gonna make me feel good. Yeah. Because hey, Archer, we love him. Yeah, <laughs> the book is so I think this is gonna be a six star read for me. Yeah. I got a you're, feeling. You're gonna you're gonna love it. Because oh. Solid the Garage. Solid, how do you say her name? Soledad. Soledad. Yeah, and I feel like her story is kind of similar to mine. Yes, she literally, like, I can't, I'm not going to spoil well, anything, but, like, it talks a lot about learning to love who you are and solo day. The thing that I resonated with the most was how she was learning to love herself, mm -hmm. and it's like, that's hard to do, and she had to do it on her own. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you read that a lot in romance books, like, mm -hmm. ever. No. Like, usually they tell you, like, you know, you break up with this guy, and then you jump right in with somebody else, mm -hmm. and you, like, oh, it's so good. Yeah. Once you get to the um, garage scene, let me know. Okay, I will. I will. <laughs> Oh my god, I got so many books to read over the next week because I wanna I really wanna read that. If you say it's five star, I'm I'm she's literally accurate. If if she says five star, I'm that means that I'm gonna like it. it. You're and it reminds me so much of love. When you words. rate stuff a three star, I don't even give it a chance. But if she <laughs> rates it a five star, then it's like okay. What about four star? Yeah, four star is okay. But five star, every time you rate some five star is good. Wow. Yeah. That's a lot of pressure. But I I don't really rate a lot of stuff five star. That's so. what I, that's my point. 
<laughs> you know when it's five star, it's good. Yeah. It's good. I'm excited. Okay, okay. And it's a whole series. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. And, and it's series, the whole girl. series. Yeah, the whole series on Kindle Unlimited. I'm going to go <gasps> download it. I love Kindle Unlimited. Thank you for my Kindle Paperwhite. She changed the game for me. Like I didn't think that you would like it. Like When I gave it to you, I was uh -huh. like, I feel like I'm just wasting money. <laughs> girl, no. I... I love it. It goes everywhere with me. I'm just so sad it's not in my purse. Yeah. And I'm thinking, I think it was on my bed because I set it on my bed and I forgot to put it back in my purse. Because mm -hmm. I literally direct. like it, on, If it's not my bed, on my bed, it's in my purse. <laughs> like, so that way I don't forget it. Yeah. And I'm like, dang it, I could have been reading. I need to finish that book, but... Dang. Yes. Oh, well. What else did I read? I'm trying to think of what I read before that. Um, I'm reading oh, I'm reading so many books right now. Usually, mm. you know, I'll read like four books yeah. or three books. I saw you had 20... Um, your video popped up. I haven't watched it yet. The 20 books you want to read for yes. April. I said, uh, I'm done with TBRs. <laughs> really? Done with them. I can't do TBRs. Because you're just mood read. Yeah, I feel yeah. like I never stick to my TBR. Like, I kind of make it just for fun. Mm -hmm. But then, like, I look back and I'm like, I only read, like, six books off my TBR. And, like, mm -hmm. last month I read 19 books. And I literally read, like, six books off my TBR. For real? You read yeah. 19 books? I did, yeah. Oh, my God. She I don't know how you do. <laughs> We're gonna go inside, see if we can find any books in here. <laughs> What'd you do? With my hair. Girl, child, she don't know what to do with these braids. I don't, I love them. You can tell she's a beginner. I love them. <laughs> she's a newbie. I love them. <laughs> now, now you're doing a lot. Now, now you're doing a lot. Now you're doing too much. Rashonda taught me how to fight at work. You grab the back of the head and you go pow, pow, pow. Anybody on my channel that saw that, you see Girl, I saw I you. You don't know how to fight. Yeah, you <laughs> saw it. What is that gonna do? And Ella, she couldn't. I'm like, man, okay. Ray's gotta give you some boxes. I can fight. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. Should I leave? No, I'm sure they'll know this is my book. I'd leave it in here. Hashtag we black. <laughs> right. I'm literally like, we're at Edwardsville. Like, I don't know. What you know, this is like. where I want to move. Oh, really? I love this town, even mm -hmm. though there's like no color here. But yeah, their school district. There's none really. really good. I mean, there's. Not much where you live either, so. Dang, you right. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna live here there's not. It's like, well, you know. Well, I'm saying much. if I'm gonna move, I would hopefully move you want to a more, more diverse yeah. place. Yeah. Yeah. This is a cool. It's a cool area. This is very nice. Yeah. Oh, there's a Glicks over there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're gonna go in and see what we can find. Um, you guys have been encouraging us to go into the library, and I feel like I've been. One goal that I wanted this year was to go in the library more, because it's like I can literally get a book for free if I don't like it. I get to take it back, and that's great. I can save some money. So. We're gonna go in, um, show you guys what's in the library because you guys are always saying like, you know, there's a lot of good books in my library because I live in the capital of Illinois, mm -hmm. but I feel like there's a lot of books at libraries just in general. So we're gonna go in, see what's in there. <laughs> You're going to library chat. You don't think there's gonna be good books in there? I don't like the library. Really? Why? It's just not my scene. Oh. I like, <laughs> I just, I don't you really, don't like I'm it. literally just talking. <laughs> I have no opinion when it comes to the library. I'm like, I want to go in the library. You're like, I don't like the library. <laughs> I'm oops, like, since my lady. <laughs> like, since I'm just lady. talking. I enjoy the library. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do. I'm, I don't have enough experience with the library to dislike to or to like well, it's kind of like when you were, when we first went to Books A Million. And hey, then, don't bring up my past. <laughs> <laughs> no, we went to Books A Million and then. We went to Barnes afterward, and you're like, I still like Books a Billion better because you're like, I'm more comfortable. Then you went to Barnes, and like, I like Barnes better because I'm more comfortable. So it might be like a, you, know, you just gotta get more comfortable in there. <laughs> now she coming for my drama. <laughs> All right, see you soon. <laughs> she said, I'm a model. I'm the model. <laughs> the reason why you're not sure if you like the library is because you gotta navigate the system like this <laughs> it was on your boobs you gotta <laughs> <laughs> sorry y'all we struck um we cannot be in a library together i know we're so loud so loud okay so we gotta find the fiction section first look and, like, how cute you look thanks you look cute too look i know you, girl she said i know oh my god let me see my face in yours or hey Thing. You gotta show them. Show them what? My camera. Oh. 
<laughs> I'm gonna screenshot that and send it to myself. Okay, we gotta go to. Um, the... I'm so sorry. The quality of this video is probably questionable. No, it's I'm looking good. at Shaughnessy's, <laughs> and I'm not paying attention to y'all. <laughs> so I'll pull y'all out in a little bit. Wow. <laughs> People always get cut off. <laughs> like, we gotta go. Well, you're doing. You're doing really good though. Um, but I, uh, I feel like when you know where to go when you go in the mm -hmm. library it makes you love it more so once you find there's gotta be like a fiction slash romance you said <gasps> look new arrivals hold what? on what don't y'all love am i too close no you're good don't y'all love how she always trying to educate me <laughs> <laughs> is that bad i'm trying to get her to love the library i don't i like the library i just you don't you know like too it. much about it that's what i'm saying i literally said once you know a word just let me experience it not her taking my words and say the exact same thing. No, like these, they have all the new arrivals here. Oh, okay. Yeah. This is the new arrivals. Girl. <laughs> oh, this is on um, Reese's Book Club. I haven't read that. By a black author. Ooh. There's a lot. <gasps> I read this book. I didn't like it. You did it? No, I rated two stars. <laughs> I definitely never read it. Yes. <laughs> It was not for me. Oh, this one just came out. Um, which one? Amish and Christian fiction. Heyo. And African American nonfiction. I don't know nothing <laughs> about the Amish community. I would love to learn more though. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> we cannot be taken anywhere. We're too loud. Do you want me to hold your purse? Uh-uh. I don't like down. when people put the purses on the ground. I know. I don't believe that there's not like good luck in that. I no, I just don't like it. Oh, you just don't like it. Oh, I thought you were like, you know, some people are you like. You know what? <laughs> you know what? You know what? I can't go anywhere with these braids. <laughs> Y'all, just wait till she discover all the styles that she does with them. And just, just wait till she gets the bun. Just wait till I'm in a swimsuit. Oh, God. Just wait till I'm in a swimsuit. She's going to be all of our story. Oh, I'm going to be all of my story. I'm going to be on the beach just like, yeah, I can't wait. Um, oh, my God. <gasps> Alex. <gasps> They got the hard copy for the library. Yes. You know why they did that? Why? So I don't get tore up like my one book did. <laughs> oh, okay. So this one is by a black author too, and it came I think out. You told me that. Yeah, it just came out this year. I haven't read the first one, but I own it. <laughs> this one's new. They have actually a good. So we gotta open. We gotta open a little book account thing. Yeah. Look at this one. These are like a lot of like popular book talk books. Actually, thirst right here is oh. one. You gotta tell of... my people the same thing you just said. Okay, that these are all like popular ones? Yeah, yeah. pull out your camera. Y'all, we're sitting here talking and Alex was saying, what what show are you watching? Blood and Water on Netflix. <laughs> and, what... <laughs> and why couldn't why couldn't you watch it? I couldn't. I had to cut it off, y'all, because I just kept thinking, oh my God, it'll be so much better as a book. Because I was like, I can't even hear what he's freaking thinking. Yes. Like, I like to know his thoughts. His I, thoughts, her thoughts. Like, yes, yes. I need to know what's really going on. Yes. Like, when she's sitting there looking sad, is she really sad? Yes. Or is she putting on a front? Right. Books just take away the enjoyment of TV. Like, you can't True. really. Well, that's why when people are like, oh, have you seen the show? I'm like, I literally would rather read. Like, I would rather do anything but watch movies. Yeah. Like, I can find, I feel like the movie theater experience, I enjoy that, but I think it's more the experience and less like mm -hmm. the movie. Because so I'm like, I would rather be reading. Yes, and I feel like you just get way more detail. Mm -hmm. You get way more detail when you're reading. And I love, I never thought, and I was a TV girly. Really? I was a TV show girly. Like, yes. Have you kept up with any of your shows? No, just Blood and Water, but I couldn't even watch it. <gasps> Dang. It makes me so shocked. No, it doesn't. Not really. Well, only because I'm watching it with my little cousin right now. Oh, okay. And she's like, when are we going to finish? And I'm like, Ever. never. <laughs> Have you seen that real? It's like, never. <laughs> never. We're so Yo, loud. Today. This is why we can't be together. Why are we together at a freaking library? We're so loud. You're loud. I am so loud. <laughs> You ain't gonna know what to do with these braids. I know. I literally keep feeling like <laughs> Y'all, y'all will not see her hair again till next year. No, literally, yeah. Like, this is gonna be She's like, awesome. time for touch up. <laughs> Don't talk to me when I got braids. <laughs> Don't take your eye out. I know. Oh my gosh. But yes, guys, books are just they're better. They're way better. Mm -hmm. I don't like, I hate that I don't like um, movies or TV that much anymore, but 
I don't know, and I feel like I could read a smutty book and not be judged. Because if I was watching it on TV, yes. people like, girl, what you watching? And especially because, like, smutty books, like, there's multiple scenes. Whereas, imagine a movie, it's like, it's, if you're just watching that. And he choked me with his ankle. <laughs> with his toes. <laughs> Have you seen that guy on, um, I've seen him on Instagram before. He does the little voice for books. The black man. No. I got to. <laughs> How much I ever have. The author that I was saying that I really like. Yes, Riley yes. Seegers, right? Yep. Is it Seeger? Seeger, but. It's Seegers. He told me. That's a little too close I to. Freddie <laughs> <laughs> Seegers? I got some on my lip? No, I said oh. <laughs> saying Seegers. Ain't it Seegers? No, it's Seeger. It's Seegers. That's a little too close. To what? To. <laughs> This is the one that I read, and I wasn't obsessed with the story because, <laughs> because the ending, but the writing was really good. Mm -hmm. So it kind of reminded me of like if I had read, it's not similar to Freedom McFadden at all, mm -hmm. but if I had read The Inmate by Freedom McFadden, like mm -hmm. I would I would know that I liked the writing but didn't like the story. Yes. That's kind of how it is. It's like I didn't like the story, but I liked the writing enough, and I literally bought, <laughs> I bought me. this one, and I bought this one. What did I say? Final Girls what? And I bought this one. Uh, this is the last time I lied. Final girls. Yeah, they got the heart back in every cup. I don't like that. And the only one left. I want to read the only one left because it looks like the only one left. <laughs> <laughs> read, read what it's about. You want me to read it to them? Yeah, read it to them. <sighs> Story time. Wait, hold on. Story time. No, I'm. I'm. I'm doing that. Hold on, I got a sign. I was gonna do like a little like word thing, and I'm like, I'm not doing that. You should do it and stop being like that. It just, is, just do it. It's too much work. Just do it, girl. Is this it? Yep. But it don't look like it. That's it. Are you sure? Uh huh. You just read this part right there. That tells you enough. No, it, listen. <laughs> it says. Best-selling author Riley Sager returns with a deliciously twisted and addictive gothic killer <laughs> about a young caregiver assigned to work for a woman accused of Lizzie Borden. Like massacre decades earlier. I killed that! <laughs> Girl, you should see my face. <laughs> what was you doing? You said, Lizzie <laughs> <laughs> Borden. <laughs> I'm trying to sound like the man. At 17. <laughs> okay. Yeah, did they, you think they heard me? Yeah, I think they heard you. Yo, don't, that actually low-key sound good. Yeah, that's why I got it. Yeah. Mm. You I'm, could get it. Heart back. <laughs> <laughs> I forget you did say you don't heart back. But I'm gonna look on Kindle. You know what's so weird? I like hardback thrillers, and I don't really like hardback other stuff. I don't know what it is about a thriller. Like, I like a hardback thriller. I still have to read the last word. What is that one? The one you bought me, like, months ago. Oh, that's a hardback. So you may never get to that one. No, Dang. I'm going to get to it. Darn it, I'm going to get to it. Yeah, there's a lot of... Um, <laughs> when does it know music? Guys, we found books by black authors. We've already found a ton, obviously, but like these are the books that I, I bought a book by this author with um, the blind, with the book thing in Chicago and you didn't get it. So like now you could get it. I'm gonna think about it long and hard. No. <laughs> Alex. She's so like what? I like that color, your hair color too. Thanks. It's giving. You've been giving so many compliments. Thank you, I appreciate it. Yay. Cause I deserve them. Cause I'm deserving. Cause you're a Leo and you're sick. <laughs> what? <laughs>
this is a super popular thriller author. I just bought this book when I was out of town because one of my friends was like, it's a super popular thriller. It's been on the bestsellers list. And then, oh, wait, that's not the book I was looking at, but this is a new book. This right here just came out last Maybe year. at the lake. Yes. Is it a thriller or just a happy? It's a romance, yeah. Mm. I, I didn't really care oh, for sorry. it. Meet me at the lake. <laughs> I didn't care for it. But don't throw me in. <laughs> and and uh, there's just, they have a lot of like popular books in here, which is nice. It's kind of, I don't know. I guess it's not rare. I was going to say it's kind of rare, but I guess it's not rare because mm -hmm. like every library I've been to has had a really good selection. Guys, there's another author. This is one of my like favorite um, authors. This is more of like a comfort read. Okay. Like whenever Sister Christy was like saying, you know, whenever you're looking for comfort reads, um, I think she mentioned her. I could be wrong. So good. I read these in 24 hours. Like, and these are all books. Oh, her. you read them in 24 hours? Oh, they're really good. Yes, I literally finished this I really in 24 hours. Of your world. Yeah, that's the first one. I have that one at the house. And this is a thriller I read. Didn't really like it, but it's popular. When she was gone. Yep. They have a lot of. By Lisa Jewell. Uh huh. A lot of popular books. In I here. got that one. The Family Upstairs. Oh, do you? Did you like it? Uh, you know I ain't read it yet. <laughs> that's the thing. Is there's so many good books. My TBR is ridiculous. Does it ever get overwhelming, or is it like exciting? It's exciting, but I agree. I need to stop. <laughs> no, you don't. You could be doing drugs, girl. I did say that. I did say that. <laughs> No, this is great. All right, we're gonna go over to, to the section where you can buy books. It's another book by a black oh, author. Talking by Beverly Kendall. I've read that. Have you really? Oh my god, so good. No, you haven't. <laughs> I have. When? You look like you're lying. I'll tell you what it's about and everything. Okay, what's it about? It's about Kennedy Mitchell. Okay. And she was plucked from her reception. <laughs> I'm done with in you. place in a cor corporate boardroom. Oh, okay. Is that yes, what it was so good. It's, was it? It is the token. The you really liked it, huh? Token is a romantic <laughs> comedy. Holy Grail. Oh, okay. It's called Token. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is how you know she does not lie. She's not a liar. She cannot lie. <laughs> Token by Beverly Kendall. My, my, my. Another book by a black author. Hey, Loki sounds good, though. They have a romance section. They have books for sale. How do we come into the library and we found the books for sale section? <laughs> like how? Look, mystery suspense. Oh, they have them all labeled. Fiction, mystery suspense. Ooh, I've heard that this book is good. I actually I own it. That one. Do you? Well, I, it's somebody's, but I'm probably never getting it back. Oh, <laughs> we could just buy this one. I don't know how much it is. Oh my gosh. I think it's three dollars. Is that what that is on there? Oh yeah, I get. I might buy it. Is so this twelve? Is that twelve dollars? Is it twelve? I don't know. Because if the numbers are that, that's oh, kind Lord. of expensive. I up, <laughs> you guys are literally sitting on top of my car, but I'm waiting for Alex to come over by the front door. Um, we're getting ready to go into Bella Milano. But I wanted to show you guys the book that I ended up getting from the library. I got um, Proof of Forever by Lexa Hillier. I've never read anything from this author, but this book looks so cute, and I thought that this would be really fun for the free library. It says, The Sisterhood of the Time Traveling Pants for a New Generation um, on the back. That's like one of the quotes. And it looks so, so good. It was only 50 cents. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> well, I gotta end the vlog because, like, we're I'm not gonna be chatting with you guys yeah, inside. Bye. Well, I was waiting until you got here. I was showing them the book. Wow, <laughs> he's trying to cut me out of the vlog. Never, he's trying to cut me out of the freaking vlog. Never, this sun is giving, isn't it? Is it? I can't see no, it literally is. Um, if you guys want to see the rest of the vlog, we're gonna go in and eat at Bella, Bella Milano. Um, go to Alex's channel because she will be vlogging. I there, will right? be vlogging, yes. Um, but I wanted to read like what the inside of this book says real quick. Um, it's it says the perfect summer of first kisses, skinny dipping in bonfires. They pretty much have a great summer, all these friends. And then something pulls them apart. And then um, it says that uh, two years later, they're like not friends anymore. And then they have a fateful flash in a photo booth and it transports the four of them back in time. And so they have to recreate the past in order to return to the present. So they pretty much have to like figure out like why they stop being friends to get back to the present. So it's kind of like time traveling slash like nostalgic friends at like summer camp cause they're at camp. So I figured this would be nice for a free library and it was only 50 cents. So anyway, we're gonna go inside. What if that whole car was 50 cents? 
We should have just got all of those and we could just put them in. That could have been how I you start your free library. That. I didn't even think about that. All those books could have been She wants to start a free library in um, Sparta because they don't have one. And that would be perfect. So perfect. We'll have to come back. They're only 50 cents, so. Yeah, they might have a 50 cent rack every time. <laughs> we're gonna rack up next Yeah, time. we're gonna go back. But um, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Well, the sun is sunny. I know, right? All right, I mean, can I say bye to them? Dang. Yeah. She didn't even let me talk to y'all. How y'all doing? <laughs> I feel like we barely got to talk today because she's been hogging the camera to herself. But I mean, I guess if y'all want to talk, y'all can go on over to my channel. I'm saying, it's my and channel, so. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care if you right. know, it literally cut off. <laughs> it did. It literally and that you know that's that was the Lord's work. He was <laughs> anyway. He was bye. Working. You gotta say bye nicely. Anyways. They're not gonna see you for sorry. another month. My belt hitting this car. They're not gonna see you for another month. Okay channel. guys, I'm so sorry. I will see you guys. And hopefully my hair don't stink. No, it's good. The sun is really my lips look luscious. They do. <laughs> <laughs> luscious lips. <laughs>
laughed out loud at a book because it is so cute. That's when you know it's like good when you're just yes. like giggling while you're reading yes. it. Yes, like, kicking your feet. Yes, <laughs> that's the best feeling. It's so good. I uh, what did I read? Oh, I was telling you that I have been reading. Um, Love You Always. Yes, by... if that's here, I need to pick that it's up. It's so good. It's not here. Because it only has like 200 reviews on Goodreads. Okay. So she's like then a small author. Good. But it's so good. Okay, I need good. to get that. Like, so good. I can't stop talking about it now. Because um, I feel like it's similar to Love and Other Words. Yeah. And you were saying like you really like that so too. It's so cute. I loved it. I can see why it's one of your favorites. Yeah, I think I want to read it every year. And then once you, like I, the special edition copy that I have, it has um, Elliot's point of view. Yes, no, not the whole it. book, but like it has a couple chapters. See, that was like the only thing I was like, I need his Yes, point like I need you. it. I need yes, it. yeah, and it has like his point of view during oh. the spicy. Yeah. It's like, mm. yeah, their spicy was so like innocent and sweet, I but I was like, oh. I know. It was pretty good. I know. <laughs> oh, and they had like their clothes on. I was like, <laughs> I know. I was like, okay, Elliot. <laughs> With the glasses. Well, okay, so, With if the you glasses. Had, I, so if you had to rate like from one to eight, what would be like the top down? I don't know. By it's, keeping their team buying so, well, I don't know because like the Daisy Hates books are like right up oh, there yeah, too. I forgot. And like, she's literally Daisy. Like <laughs> literally. I love them so much. But like I need more. Yeah. So I would have to put keeping and binding ahead because yes. like, I've got like closure. Yeah. But like right now I'm mentally unwell because I don't know what's going on. With you're, Daisy you're, um, okay. We just need to talk about how she finished Love in Other Words last night. You started it. Or you I finished the day before last? I finished it Friday night. I started at like 7 o'clock and stayed up till midnight. Yeah. She, from 7 o'clock to midnight, she finished the book. And then woke up and started at like 9 o'clock, started... Um, like, this is your job. Yeah, no, literally, <laughs> like, I was clocked like, in. in. I was clocked in. I got up to coffee. And then we started with We're Perfect Strangers or something Oh, like yeah, that. Before We Were Strangers. Uh, before We Were Strangers. And finished that one at like 2 or 3. Oh, you finished it? Yeah. It was so good. I couldn't stop. I didn't know you finished yeah, it. Yeah, I did. So, two books in 24 hours. That was great. Well, the fact, because I was like, I know you can read fast because she finished um, Binding 13, which is like a 600 page book. You finished that in what, like two days or a day? Yeah. And then those words are like so, so small. small. I showed it to Gunnar and he was like, How are you reading? Yeah, that? they're so tiny. They're and so then you little. finished, um, what else did you finish? I think I finished um, Keeping 13 right after that. And then Daisy Hates. And then Daisy Hates. <laughs> and The Great Undoing, Daisy Hates. So and good. Long and Way Home. I tried to take my time with The Great yeah. Undoing because. But I did finish it and then it goes. So sad. Oh, I don't oh so you're done? So the next one is Into the Dark? Yes, and I don't know if I can start it honestly until I have the next book. Like, I don't know if I can do it. Because I know that one, like, really got you. That one's gonna rip, like, I can't. rip your heart. I don't out. think I can do it. It <laughs> is, I will say it is good closure because it's Magnolia's last book. Yes. So, like, it is good closure. So you feel like, okay, this is, like, final right. at the end. But that one, like, I'd, I'd say probably at page, like, 12. Any, mm -mm. I was like, well, after what happened in her other one, I don't, I can't, I'm not ready to dive in. Yes. I don't need to hear what's going on with her. In my mind, she's fine. Yeah, <laughs> like she's okay right now. Well, she texted me and she was like, um, what did you say? You were like, I need like something that's more like relaxed or like, I, yeah, like give me something happy, oh, please, please. I need like a happy, something light. <laughs> well, when she also texted me and she was like, um. Jessa Hastings is gonna hear from my therapist. No, seriously. And then I opened yeah. Daisy's book, and it was like, I'm not paying for your therapy bill. And I was like, yes. okay. She clocked me. Yep, she knew. She yeah. Knew. So today she we're, she's doing. we need to. Do you want to look for happy books, sir? Yes. Um, but actually, you know what? I like this. Whatever. I like it. Like it's deep. It's dark. I love it. Well, I feel like it also gets me. Like you were, we were talking before. I like turn on my camera, but like I feel like it gets you more like. Um, Connected to like your own life. It does. Like and it, it makes, makes you think about really things. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like thank God I'm not going through these. Yeah, these characters are. Yeah, I keep doing this. Like no one can oh, really tell me. No, you look so good. <laughs> you always look good, but like I can tell you're feeling yourself too. I am. I'm a the confident. You're feeling. I love it. And you look so good. I love I it do. so much. You're always talking me up. Have you shown me your like mom and sister? No, not yet. <gasps> yeah. Have it? I haven't oh yet. I gotta gosh. show them. Uh, yeah. I love it. It so looks much. so so good. Yes. Okay, let's go find the good books. Yes, I'm so excited. I'm excited. Um, whatever your heart desires, okay. I will follow you and I'll tell you if it's good or not. Yeah, you're gonna help. I swear every time I want to say something and then I'll put my camera away <laughs> so I have to turn back on. Um, but someone DM'd me and they were like, hey, can you give me some good recommendations for books that are like 
deep and thought out mm -hmm. because I had read some literary fiction. They're like, I normally read liter literary fiction. Right. And they were like, I have a hard time finding romances that are like meaningful. And they're like, it's usually like easier for me to find like meaningful deep books with literary fiction. Like, you know what I mean? Right. I was like, I totally, totally understand that. But there are a lot of like deep, oh, meaningful sure. like romance books. And I feel like like Magnolia Parks, Before We Were Strangers. Mm -hmm. like, Every romance book you've given me I feel like wouldn't even be considered romance yeah it like, has other plots yeah. and it makes me think about stuff outside of just the romance oh, for like sure. and I feel like that's like what people are looking for so Absolutely. there you can definitely find like a I lot want, of like, a strong books. strong character yes but also happens to fall in love Yes, like I guess that's what I'm you, oh, you still have Carrie Soto's back. I do. You? I still have that one. That. I'm going to read like, that one. You would for sure. love that. I feel like it's that so might good. be my next one. I was going to start Powerless, but I'm like, maybe I want something small. Yeah. You have to tell me how Powerless is because I, I really own it and I haven't read it yet. I'm just Everything nervous. you've sent me about it is like, you want to read it so bad. I just want someone else to read it first. Oh, yeah. I haven't read it. I'll let you know if it's good. Okay, good. <laughs> Taylor's never read anything from Emily Henry. We are going to put her on okay. because, so, this book, Book Lovers. Oh, wait, is this all This book, Happy Place. This book, Petrie. I've heard good things about Petrie. This book, People Me on Vacation. They are adapting all of these into movies. And she's had one of these books come out pretty much every year for the past few years. I hate this is a bit by the way. Um, all of them are being adapted to movies. And they're all by like big, big like. No. Yes. I think um, the People We Meet on Vacation. Oh, I got to show you. She just posted this thing um, on her Instagram. Also, wait, can we take a moment for how these books all match you right now? <laughs> they look so cute <laughs> next to you. Thank you. Completely aesthetic. She posted on her Instagram someone who is going to be like um, in the movie and like people went crazy. So this is who's doing Book Lovers, After Sun. That's who's doing Beach Read. That's who's doing People We Meet on Vacation. They're literally all being adapted. That but she, so cool. she posted. Um, She's not messing around either. Like boom, no, boom, boom. Um, not at all. And they're all being done right now. Okay, like, I have to read them. I have to read them all. Um, who? Okay, I gotta, I gotta go to this girl's um, TikTok. I'm way too deep in like book stuff, but there's no, this, I love it. There's this girl who posted who the actors might be, and I feel like you might know who they are because you, I feel like, know people better than me. Like I just don't know like who half the people are, um, but I feel like you will. Here, let me show you. Because she posted, yeah, she posted who was who the person was on her story. I'm excited. Who post them? Do you know who they are? Oh wait, do you know who they are? Yeah, he's in the normal people TV show. Okay, he's so good. I'm is he? Obsessed with okay, him. so she all she. This is why like people are so deep. He's in, like, a the books really have. really good actor. So the books have to be really good. Yes. Yeah, so we're pulling him. So Emery Henry, she posted on her stories that picture. That's it. She didn't post oh, anything else, so people were like, which like, one is it? Which one is it? Yeah, because they're all being I need adapted. To read it. Yes, so this is the only one I haven't read yet, okay. but I am planning on reading it this summer. I have it on my TBR for this month. Um, I think you should read Beach Reader. That's what I have heard this one. Yes, is so good. That okay. one I think is my favorite. Gus <laughs> is. <God>. This one. <laughs> Such a cute name. Augustus. So. <laughs> This beach read is about, it's really not like set at a beach, but um, this girl, she um, has, I think a lake house and her dad owns a lake house and she mm -hmm. goes there to write and she's had like a really hard time writing. She has some stuff going on in her personal life. Um, when she gets there, the neighbor, Gus, he's also a writer, but they write different things. She writes romance and he okay. writes like, I think literary fiction or something like that. And he's like, oh, like, I don't know why you're having a hard time writing. Cause he's kind of like grumpy. He's like, I don't know why you're having a hard time, but not like mean grumpy. No, it's like, just so sassy. Yeah, like sassy. <laughs> and he's like, I don't know why you're having a hard time writing. Cause you just write romance. And she's like, yes. No. She's like, romance is hard. Like it's not yeah. an easy thing to write. And he's like, okay, you write my genre and I'll write your that genre so and we'll see who can like sell the most books whenever it's published. So she's like, okay, so they go on all these little dates for their like research right. of the research. genre. Yeah. <laughs> it is so good. That sounds so cute. Is it like just her point of view? No, it's his too. <gasps> and there's one point. I, I'm actually obsessed with the dual Me too. point of view. I'm obsessed with that. Yeah. It goes, um, oh, what is the quote? I can't, <sighs> what did he say? He's like, I'm overwhelmed like by the thought or what did he say he's like i'm overwhelmed that you exist or something like in the best way like i for it's something like that and like it's very um the writing is like beautiful okay, like you'll, I'm really you'll excited. underline a lot of stuff i've heard so so many it's things. so good Yay. it's so good okay i'm very excited. and i've read like this one wasn't my favorite because it read to me more 
a lot of her books actually do read more like um, contemporary verse, contemporary fiction. Okay, I feel like you like that. Then. Yeah, you yeah. definitely do. Like Taylor Jenkins Reid, she wrote like a quote on this oh, one. Like awesome. her books kind of read. Um, like they have a lot more outside of the romance. I like that. That's yes. I think my favorite like romance yes. genre is when they have so much going on outside, outside of it. Outside of it. Yes. yes. Yeah, and all her books are like that. Like this one has a focus on like friendship a lot oh. and the romance. Okay, I like that. All of these um, friends, they get together every year for um, like a get together at a cabin. And her and her boyfriend have been together for years, but they broke up, but they don't want to tell the friend group because so, like this would be awkward when we get together. Oh. So they get to the cabin, they fake date, pretend that they're together, but then they find out that their friend group has all kinds of stuff going on. They've been keeping secret, Ooh. and they have pretty much at the end of the book, they're like talking about how hard it is to stay friends with people you've been like friends right. with for a long time. Right. So it's, they're all just so Okay, good. that sounds really good. I don't recommend them to everyone, because I do think, like there's a lot of people I will say wouldn't like her writing, but I feel like her writing is very, um, it has a lot outside of the romance, I, and I feel like exactly if you like it, yes, yeah. yeah, I feel like you'll I love it. it, and it's very lyrical, I'm gonna love quotable. It, everything you've told me to read, I've been obsessed. With. Like <laughs> you, you know how obsessed, <laughs> literally reading it in one sitting. Yeah, that is that is actually crazy that it. you finished Love and Other Words it's in like so three good. hours. It is so so good, guys. We're talking about um, the Magnolia Park series and like when the next book's gonna come out because she hasn't read Into the Dark and like. You're literally gonna freak out. Over I'm it. scared. But um, Jessa Hastings, she just follows like what she feels like the story I is love supposed that. to be. And she said, um, what did she say? She said, um, ooh, I forgot what I was gonna say. Where did I leave off before? I, this I'm is about Julian. Oh yeah. So yeah. people want. Oh, I can't. I don't want to spoil anything. But people are like, she like has to be with Julian. Like she has to be with Julian. She can't be with BJ. And she's like. You literally are like so obsessed with this person who he's great, but like he literally kills people. Yeah. You would rather her be with someone who kills people than someone who's cheated on her once. once. Like, <laughs> once. which I mean, granted, he does it's do some bad. questionable things, and it's but like, also, like I wouldn't say, and I know like Julian's like the one, uh, his inner like monologue is him trying to like deny the fact yes. that he likes her, but still, with some of the stuff he says, I'm like, that's not okay. Yes, and also like, BJ like, would yeah. never yeah, say that it's about like, her. And do you love her? Or do you idolize who Magnolia is? Like, like I don't know. No, like, for real. Like the fact that he's been in fact video on her for a long time, it's like, eh. mm hmm, mm hmm. It's giving him emotional energy. Yeah, 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 absolutely. It's just, it's not like I really do like him and mm -hmm. I like Me too. them, but like it's not the same. I wonder Even if she's her. gonna make um, like him have a bigger like focus in the next. I hope so. Oh my god, I cannot wait for you to read the dark. I'm so excited. I'm that's literally my favorite book of the entire no. series. It is. And it's a thick one. It's a thick one. She was also saying that she was looking on like the vlogs or whatever and like people were saying that Jessa is going to kill off someone in the next Daisy mm -hmm. book that comes out next year. Yeah. She literally says like someone asked her and she's like, yeah, someone dies. <gasps> I have no, there's like speculations about who it's going to be. I really hope it's someone that doesn't matter, but of course it's going to be someone important. It has to be. It's going to be. Oh my god. I'm not ready. Who would you who would you want it to be? Like if you okay, had to someone, pick someone said they think it's gonna be Taylor? Christian's mom. Oh Christian's mom. And I would honestly I kinda just hope it is because it's like I don't like, I don't care about it. Taylor but some, some people say Taylor, which I feel okay, but some people say it's gonna be Romeo. No. Yeah, and I don't want it to be him. Ooh, I could see that because yeah. like she's still she's so connected. Well and that would be like her version of like yes. you know, yeah. and, or some people say it's gonna be Julian. I just don't I feel like that yeah. makes you like expected. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, but then what if it is because like of the way that well I guess you don't know how into the dark ends, but you know kinda how it's progressive. Like, we know who's right. faded. Yeah. So like, what if she does that because it's like... I'm scared. But like, what if it's crazy? Like, what if she just throws like a huge wrench in it? Oh, I'm nervous. I'm very nervous. Okay, we have so many books. So many. Mostly you. Yeah, literally. <laughs> I have one book, which I will show you guys very quickly Thank because you. it's one book. I got The Fastest Way to Fall by Denise Williams. And this is um, by the same author who wrote How to Fail at Flirting which I read, really love, super it's cute, so and so I was like, I want to read another book by this author, because it, it was fun. The cover is really cute, I love yeah. the colors they use. And then you got 51 uh, books. <laughs> Wait, every time. last time that here, you got like eight books. Time. But you've read like all of them. So I have, I'm gonna go through have, them quick. She only has three books at her house right, right now, but she hasn't read any. And only two of them are from our last trip here. Yeah, How many did you pick up last time? Seven. 
Yeah, and I read eight already. So I, I, I added in the next Magnolia book, yeah. and then the third one I have left is the one you got me the long way home. Isn't that what? Yeah, into, yeah, yeah. No, into the dark. So is that the yeah, last into the dark into is the, dark. the last one. Yeah, I, I, I cannot wait to read that one. Like, I'm so excited. <laughs> I love the series so much. Like. She is Daisy. So good. Like literally, you're, you're Daisy. Magnolia. I you really are. Like, I you're love Daisy. It. I'm Magnolia. <laughs> so she got, got Brutal Prince. Books. Yes, Brutal Prince. And that one's like a good one. It's like a mafia one. So you I think told you'll me about like this it. one for a while, and it mm -hmm. is really pretty. Like they have pictures, and yes, them, which is really cool. And also, I think I like that that one's less than 300 pages. Oh my god, <gasps> so cool. And look at her. She looks like a freaking boss. I know. You're gonna love her. She's a very strong character. That's what I need. You know yeah. exactly what I like. You really do. She's always hyping me up, guys. No, I'm serious. <laughs> oh, I just love I'm you. I'm excited because you've told me so many good things. That book is so, so good. And someone who, um, they messaged me. I can't remember where it was, but it was like TikTok, Instagram, or like what. But someone was like, I don't ever read romance. And I read this book and was obsessed. They're like, I read contemporary fiction. Yeah. Or usually I read, um, literary fiction and they're like I just was obsessed I feel like anyone in any genre would like this book which you love romance anyway I but, do I really do yeah. but I also like contemporary fiction yes. I feel like everything that you recommended me though is such a balance of both yes. I think that's why it's interesting that people are like I only read yeah. a certain genre it's like they can all kind of mesh ben, yeah they blend together if you find the right author yeah. like I feel like all of these authors or most of them have like other things that make you think about deeper things which yes. I feel like is why people yeah. like like literary Absolutely. fiction because they want to think about stuff outside of like the romance so yes. so this one you haven't read this one no now. you have to tell me if this, this is good this is like an impulse pickup yeah but and I've never even heard anyone so talk about bad. that either I just love like the, what the back says it's yeah like faded love love faded love and the I, red string theory honestly I feel like all love's faded yeah it really is love that's like your favorite it. no it really too. is and you were telling me about this but like we couldn't remember what it was yes. called yeah and we just like randomly found it <laughs> This one's been a long time coming. Yes, it really has. Please read with Gus. I don't know. I don't think I'm gonna read this one next because we're trying to figure out what I'm gonna read next. What did you just finish? Um, literally, I forget the name every time. Before we before were strangers. <laughs> every time. I always want to say like um. Uh, when we were strangers. Yeah, when we were strangers. Yeah. Like, yeah. Was is that a game? No. We're not really strangers is the game. Yes, yes that's is. what it is. Like, cause I'm like, why do I yes. want to say something else? Yeah. Okay, that makes complete sense. Yeah. So I finished that last. Okay. So I don't know what I'm gonna read next. I don't. For some reason, I'm wanting to save this for yeah. like, summer when it's, it's so warm. Good. But I, honestly, I think it's just because the yeah. cover it <laughs> yeah. probably has nothing to do with that. Yeah. But. What's weird is that book. It's called Beach Read, but it's like not even set in a beach. Which okay. is like people are like, this cover is almost misleading because it's literally like it's set at a lake house and like they don't okay. go to the beach but like still a summer vibe it is summer so, vibes okay. yeah it's so but yeah good. that is very interesting very interesting okay. and then <laughs> this one's been a long time coming as now my well. fingers going like no we're excited like what do we do <laughs> i'm so excited i love this series so much i feel like this i literally read book one and i was like you have to read you it. had me like no you you read like Three pages, yes, and, and I was like, like You'll you be obsessed. Me, and I literally got up and le and I went at like nine o'clock at night before they were closing, which is got out of my pajamas. Crazy. And then I started that night. And, and I did finished, you finish like, it like the next day? I finished it like the next like two days, I think, because this is the big guys. Part. Look at okay, look at the pages. It's so little. Okay, I have to show the <laughs> look how little those words are. So look at little. the page difference. Like the words are so tiny. Mm -hmm. Also, I saw people shading it, and they're like they're literally Bible thin pages. <laughs> like they're, they're like so it's like a Bible. Skinny. It's my Bible. I also feel like uh, this series is so like connected to the characters, mm -hmm. so you really like deep dive into yes. their lives, which I love. I also I obviously love when it goes back and forth between multiple different characters' yeah. point of views. But the fact that the first two books are about a character and you get a glimpse into the other ones. Yes. The second two are about those characters. Yes. But also they say you get a lot of uh, like a glimpse of Joey's point of view of Shannon oh. and Johnny, which I really love that as I well. I want to see that. How many yeah. pages are in this one? Because it's like his little sister's falling in love. Oh, oh, oh my, my god. god. <gasps> Wait, how many were on the other ones? Is 600 one? was the first one. This one's like 700 and something. <laughs> 700 and like 70. Yeah, this is literally your Bible. <laughs> this is my Bible. <laughs> That is crazy. I'm so excited. Oh my god. So I want you books. to read the second one so bad. Okay, I'm gonna, I added it to my TBR. Okay. I think it's gonna be the next book that I read after I finish okay. like Love You I Always. I think you're really gonna, I'm gonna like read it. that one next. It's like you get so much of them this time. I think you're gonna love it. And she said there's like a tad more spice but not like too much. Oh it's no, a perfect it's a little balance. spicy. I won't lie. <laughs> but I, I feel like I didn't get any of that in no, the first book. Any. So like I wanted you're ready that. for it. Yeah, I was yes. like itching like please kiss. <laughs> like I yes. was just ready. What are you gonna, um, so you said you don't know what you wanna read now. I don't know, I was thinking, um, Powerless. Okay. 
Okay. Because I know you need me to read yeah, it. Yeah, I haven't You've read it. I to. want her to read it because I need to know if it's good. I feel like so many of you guys have said it's good, but I just need to. It looks like, really good. But also, I really kind of want to dig into brute prints because I'm still like on a Daisy hangover. And, and I this feel like is this gonna, is gonna, it's like, gonna give the vibe. It's yeah. Gonna feed me. <laughs> yeah. Especially because like it has the action in it, which I feel like in Daisy you I get really that. I really love that. Yeah. I really love that. <laughs> A lot of people were saying that he was gonna be in People We Meet on Vacation, and that's the one that I have not read okay. yet. So now I'm like, I wanna read it. I think I'm gonna read it, I'm gonna try to read it this month. Um, but also, other people were saying that it could be Beach Read and he could be Gus. That's what I'm hoping, because that's the one I'm about to read. You have to tell me if you like it. And that was your favorite one? Yes, okay. out of all of them. That was my favorite. Beach Read probably first. Second, I would probably say is happy place third i'd probably say is um book lovers but like i wasn't obsessed with it um and then people we meet on vacation is the one i have okay read. and she has other ones but like these are her most popular ones in the last few years okay. so mm -hmm. i feel like yeah that makes sense. also we need to take a moment for how good your hair looks so it is so pretty thank you so much. i love it so much thank you it's I, it's definitely whenever new. you like move it i'm like oh. I keep like, like touching it. I know, it, like, I love with it. it. Show some shoulder. Yeah, <laughs> literally. Like you are ready. Summer is here. I know, literally. Even though it like is actually. You know not what? We're super pretending. Warm. We're pretending. The vibes I put are on this here. Shawl. I was like, so it is kind of cold, but I, I love it yeah. so much. We were literally the past. So like, I turn off the camera and then we were talking about Magnolia Parks and how obsessed we are with we're it. Obsessed. I think that her next book is gonna be Into the Dark. I think. I'm scared, but no, I think you've convinced me. I need to start it. Well, you just like, you love the rest of the series. It's so good. And I feel like while you're in it, like while you're already like obsessed, because I wish like I took time between the books because right. like I read Magnolia Parks and then I took a little time between that and Daisy Hates and then I didn't go right into, um, uh, what is it, Long Way Home? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Long Way Home. I didn't go right into it, and then I didn't go right into the great undoing after right. Long Way Home. And I feel like there were some things I was like, okay, wait, what was that again? No, because a lot of, like, it, the There's fact so that it's much. the same timeline, yes. you want to get those different point of views. Yes, and you almost forget, like, what happened, so if you don't know what happened in the past timeline, right. you can't really, like, put it together well, you like you convinced me when you said that I needed to just get through it and then reread it all again, yes. like, back to back, because obviously I it. started it, like, this month, uh -huh. so I have been somewhat reading back to back, mm -hmm. but not really, because... I've been mixing other things in. Yeah. But no, I literally want to like read it back to back. Take off, like a week off work vacation. <laughs> just read it all day. All oh, night. oh my God. I um found something. Oh my God. I have to show you. Um, they're pictures and I saved them. I meant to send them to you. I don't know if I screenshot at them or what. And it's literally someone. Oh my God. Someone on Pinterest. Look at this. Oh. I'm going to try to put this on the screen if I remember. Someone on Pinterest put these together. I that's and they're so like hurt with the neck. So bead and daisy coated oh, and those are like gorgeous. Magnolia and Julian no, wait, and no, no, no. I don't know. No. Oh my god, it's so sweet. Wait, I still so love you. Sweet. Yeah. Wait, did they did one with Magnolia and Julian too? Um, that's Daisy and Christian. Did. Yeah, that's Daisy and Christian. Oh my, so and look at the back, like you. And look at Wait, the pictures. Is that Magnolia? Yeah. And Daisy? <laughs> I love that. I it's know your freckles so, too. So he tells yeah. me. I, that scene was what hooked me. It really did. And it was so soon in the book, and they were yeah. literally just friends. And when look he at said this. that, the laundry mat. Oh my god. They like got all these cute little yeah, scenes in there. So cute. Yeah. That's so hurt. Mm -hmm. What's normal? The gun. Is this Daisy? She flashes me a bratty smile. I effing hate her. Also oh feel like kissing her. So cute. I love how she's so bratty. I know. I love it. You drew stars around my scars. And there's another Daisy oh one. God, so look at the cute. look at the back of that. Like I'm obsessed. Can you it's tell so I haven't slept very well since the last time we spoke? They like took so many quotes. It's so in his car. The car. Oh my god. The part. Okay. That's why I love like getting both their point of views. Mm -hmm. This is the part where she's like. I hope he never sells that car. And like literally his next thing was like, I'm never selling that car. Yes. Yeah. It's so the car cute. Scene. Oh my God. 
we don't fight. So tired. The now feel, we do. I know. Yeah. The feel of him is my favorite feeling in the world for all of history and all of time. Write it down, ring the town bell, and tell the scribes I'll wear it on my heart's sleeve forever that I love him. Well, that's so like not her either, no. but like the fact that it's her, it's like I can so feel myself cute. drifting further and further from a safe harbor though, and I should have tethered myself to something, but I didn't. I can feel it now. Her writing is insane. Me tethered to him. It literally sounds it like poetry. So, it is poetry. Like literally. Even just like taking that piece. It's so, so good. The whole book is like that though, which is amazing. But each character is like the way that they talk is so different. Mm -hmm. Like if you didn't tell me who was talking this chapter, you I would know. Yes, by how she and which is crazy because like she's just it's words on paper. I know, but it's like not. I know. It's literally my life. And then this quote, <laughs> I just never saw her coming. I couldn't have picked loving her out of a lineup until it happened. And then it was everything. My wait, this is so small. My first thought, <laughs> last thought, mid thought, the name I'd say in my sleep, the body I'd think about when I was with bodies and smell I try to chase down every time I'd walk through a selfridges. Just so I could breathe in something that smelled like her and feel close to her again, but I could never find it. It's so good. But also, it's literally poetry. I like, love like the avoidant in me like loves the fact that they don't say this to yes, each other and they're just thinking and they're it. literally like friends at this point sometimes yes. and it's like so wild. Oh, it's so good. I think that. Oh wait, there's two more. And there's this so one. Pretty. Medical books in the boxing. Mm -hmm. It's so perfect. Yeah, I don't know. God, these are so pretty. Yeah. I want to make my own, but I know like, I, really I could found never. These on Pinterest. I never do this well. So, so cute. Yeah. There's a oh part. God, that. I love it. It's There's soft. a part um, in, I think, Daisy's first book where mm -hmm. they're like robbing the like museum or mm -hmm. whatever, and there was a painting she really loves, and she says a quote of like how she loves women that throw themselves in the middle of things mm. for the people they love. Mm. And then in her second book, there's a part where Julian's fighting with someone and Agnolia runs in and like grabs like Julian and like throws herself in something that she doesn't even understand. Oh, I think I remember And it that. reminded me of Daisy's quote and I'm like, they're gonna be best friends. Yes, like she's like she literally loves. what Daisy loves. Yes. Like they're so, so different seemingly, but they are so it's similar. Like you and me. Oh, no. It's literally us. I love it so much. Like I've never been this obsessed with anything. I think it's the writing, honestly. It is like the, writing. the like the way she writes. Like it literally every line I want to like highlight. Cause, like, I know we and, have to, and I want to see what you annotate and what I annotate. Oh my god. Okay. Yes. What if you read? The yes. first book and annotate it yep. and give it to me yep. and I'll read the first exactly. book and you annotate it and mind. give it to you. You read my mind. So then you can see what I would annotate yes. and then, yeah. Okay, I'm so excited. Or, I mean, we could also annotate our own things like for our own book. No, I, I want I, I want to see that. what you yeah, like same. would pick out. Oh my gosh. Okay, yes. I'm very excited. I've never done that with someone. I haven't either. I feel like that's like the best friend gift because you can really see like what stands out to the person. Yes. It's very like intimate because it really like is. I would never want anyone to read what I annotate because it's no, like I've literally personal to hidden me. some of my annotated books. Yes. Like nobody can find it's those. Like, no, because it's like <laughs> whatever you're annotating is like super personal yes, to you. Yes, it really is. Those ones are not on my bookshelf. Yeah. <laughs> I just I just can't. Mm -mm. Guys, we have been in here for almost three hours. Yeah. I think it's been over three hours almost. Yeah. That is crazy. It does crazy. Feel, it feels like we've been in here for like two minutes. We've just been talking. Like just talking about books. From the about... second you walked in the door, we started talking. Did you, did you, did you Literally. Just <laughs> that is crazy. Like, <laughs> I feel like um, when you were saying the other day, you're like, I want to go to the bookstore. It's like so cozy and stuff. It is. Like, it just feels like we could be in here for 10 more hours. It feels and it like a different like it. Like, world. It does, yeah. Um, and like, world is not out there. No, and just <laughs> talking about books is like, it's so nice. fun. It it's is. so much fun. Well, you guys probably won't see Taylor for the rest of this video, so just wanted to be able to say bye. Next time you see me, I'm going to have eight more books. Yes. <laughs>
threw me off like because I'm a girl's girl like I am like girl to I don't know what the word is I was gonna say girl to the max so that doesn't even make any sense like I just like am a girl's girl like I love having friends that are girls like I support girls and she's like oh like I have all friends that are guys like but like none of the guys like me I don't know I just there's something about it I don't know what it was um uh, I didn't really care for like the third person uh writing I do think that this is an incredible representation of what it's like to have to, to have disordered eating and live with that and try to na like navigate through that and have friends that like are also trying to navigate through that with you. I feel like I haven't seen a book that has this type of representation, like a better book than this one. So I will definitely recommend it to people who are looking for um, book, rec book recs like that. But I think I'm gonna write this two and a half stars. I don't know, there's something about it. I can't even like put my finger on it. It just was like, I don't know. I feel like Adrian um, or Adrian, he didn't really like connect with her until like the end. And I was like, okay, like where's the romance? Like it kind of, like I found this book in the romance section and I feel like I didn't get much romance until like the end and like, I feel like this should have been listed as like contemporary fiction or something, but like literally it was on the romance table. Um, and I know that she like hooks up with people and stuff in this book, but you don't really get romance until like way into the book. So I don't know. I wasn't the biggest fan of it. Um, again, I do think that I would recommend it to people who are looking for this type of representation because I don't think that you can find it easily. Um, but I think that that is like the biggest part of the story. And I think I expected it to be a story, like a romance with the side plot of her and like her disordered eating versus like the opposite. Like it was almost like flipped where like the main character of the story was her like eating disorder and the romance was like barely in there, like a smidge. And so I don't know, I just, I wasn't the biggest fan of it, but I have, um, not very long left. You guys can see I am pretty close to being uh, done with um, this challenge. I think that I'm going to read um, the rest of Broken Clocks. I have gotten pretty far into this. I've actually been reading this on my Kindle um, and I am really enjoying it. It's a super easy read. I'm not sure if I'll finish it, but I feel like I'll get pretty far into it. Right now I'm on page 70 and well, maybe I'll finish it. I don't know how many pages there are on in here. Um, let's see. There are only, oh, I could probably finish it. There's only 270 pages. So I could probably finish this by the time that we finish this challenge. So I'm gonna sit and read. I kind of want to go outside, but it's like actually freezing cold out there. But then I know that I'm gonna be in a better mood if I do. So I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know, maybe I should go outside. I don't know, it's so cold. Um, it's so cold. It's like windy and cold, like not even just like cold, it's like windy and cold, but I always feel in a much better mood when I go outside. Um, the sun is gonna set in a few hours, so I don't know, maybe we'll go out there and like bundle up, that could be fun. <laughs> hour reading challenge which is so exciting i did go a little bit over just by like nine minutes but i think that's okay 
just figured you guys would not care. I um, am excited because this took me exactly a week to the day. Um, obviously I didn't get to like do a little wrap up last night, otherwise it would have literally been like a full week of just filming. But I started this last Tuesday and it's Wednesday right now. So I just am very excited um, that I finished this in a week. And I wanna encourage you guys, if you've never done a challenge like this, you should try it. It doesn't really matter how long it takes you to finish this kind of challenge is literally just for fun, like just for giggles, like just for the plot. You don't have to feel like you need to do a 24 hour reading challenge in 24 hours, like in one day, it doesn't have to be in two days. It could literally be in however long it takes you. And I think it's just kind of fun to see how long it takes. I did end up finishing a book. I haven't shared it with you guys my thoughts on that, um, but I wanted to give you guys this little book haul. Um, I showed you guys the book that I got whenever I was in Target with Taylor, but I didn't really like talk about what it's about. On the back it says, Britta didn't plan on falling for her personal trainer and Wes didn't plan on Britta. Plans change and it's unclear if love, career, or both will meet them at the finish line. I really wanted to pick this up because I loved How to Fail at Flirting. Like I literally could not stop giggling while reading it. It was the perfect read to like really just like, I don't know, give me the giggles. And I feel like it's hard for me to get that. Um, I also, did end up finishing Broken Clocks, which is the last um, book that I was reading. Absolutely love this. First, I wanna say that I read this on my Kindle, um, and I feel like Kindles are such a great way to read, but I always like to have a physical copy too for books that I'm like obsessed with, and I love Daniel Allen's writing. She always has lots of dialogue. I didn't really share like my thoughts as I was reading this, because it was super fast. It was like 200 pages, but I also feel like this video has been so long like already so i was just like oh my god like are you guys gonna be watching like a three hour long vlog like if you guys don't like vlogs that are this long let me know and if you do like vlogs this long let me know like this has been a long vlog but you guys are gonna have some shorter vlogs coming soon um because i have been like pre-filming because i'm going on vacation on sunday so a lot of the vlogs while i'm on vacation you guys will get will literally be like filmed in advance so that you guys can still like hang out with me three days a week um even though i'm going to be gone for like literally two weeks even though i will be filming there obviously those vlogs won't come up till i get home um so yeah i am really excited um to share those whenever i end up sharing them when i get back but I do have some like 30 minute long vlogs coming. So like if you don't finish this all in one sitting, that's okay. Cause you have tons of time to do it. This book loved it. Definitely rating this four stars. I feel like Danielle's books are, not me saying Danielle like we're friends. Like Danielle Allen's books are so just like, you are pulled into the plot super fast. They're really enjoyable, fast paced. Um, there's always some mess that's going on. Um, this was a romance that was like so, like soft and loving, but also it was kind of like a wrong place, wrong time type thing, or like wrong time, wrong, I don't know, like wrong place, wrong time, I guess that's the saying. Um, and I feel like the whole time you could feel how passionately the characters care about each other, but there's something that was kind of keeping them apart. And I really, really feel like this book was just done so well. It's a very easy one, but I feel like it's very rare for me to really be invested in a novella that's like 207 pages, but I was definitely invested. Um, I loved the friend in this book, her name was Janelle. I feel like everyone needs a Janelle in their life and I hope that there's like another book maybe about her. Um, so definitely reading that four stars. The first book that I read was Rosewater. I think I rated this like, and this is why I, like I literally will forget like what ratings I have if they like don't really like stick out, which I liked Rosewater, but I don't know, I feel like the ones that are like four stars and above are the ones that like really stick out to me. I think I rated this one three or three and a half stars. I can't remember, it was like somewhere in there. Go over to my Goodreads if you guys wanna see like the exact rating. I always try to update every single week. I, this is the only week I haven't updated it because I wanted you guys to get like a first look at these books um, and my thoughts in reading this vlog. So whenever you are seeing this vlog tomorrow, it will be updated on Goodreads. I just didn't want to be like, I don't know, have all the ratings out last week and then you guys are like, oh, I already know like what she thought of each book. So you're like skipping past like my thoughts. Like, I don't know, I just like, I guess maybe it doesn't really matter that much, but I always just think about that. Um, so yeah, I read Rosewater. Then I read um, 
I think I actually read the wrong kind of weird first before How to Fail at Flirting. Um, this book was cute. I also feel like this was a book that was really easy to read. This is also a book that I will definitely recommend for people who are wanting to read a book about like from a guy's perspective. Um, the ending wasn't my favorite just because I don't know it just wasn't. I don't even know if I updated you guys on this book. Did I even like tell you guys like the update on this at all? Like Maybe I didn't, I don't even remember, but this vlog has been so long and there's been like so much that's happened. Obviously like we went to the bookstore and like we did all the things this past week. Like it's been a busy, busy week, but this was a really good book if you're looking for a book from a guy's perspective. Um, I think that this book is definitely for people 15 and over. It's a YA book, but like they talk about things that I feel like older young adults would want to read versus like younger. So like definitely like 15, 16 and up, maybe 16 and up. That's what I say. Online it says 15 and up, but I think maybe 16 and up. Um, it talks a lot about fitting in and a lot about like just being yourself and liking yourself for who you are. It kind of reminds me of the book Reggie and Delilah's Year Falling, just like in a different vibe in a different way. Um, I really like this one. I think if I haven't already rated this one, I just genuinely don't remember. I want to say I'd rate this 3.5, I think. Um, I think, yeah, I think I would rate this 3.5. I literally, my brain is like absolutely fried because it's been so long since I've like read some of these books. Um, and then I read How to Fail at Flirting. Absolutely love this book. Four stars, so freaking cute. I really, 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 really love this one. Um, I haven't read anything from this author and I immediately went out and bought a book by this author because this book was so fun, so fluffy and I feel like it's very rare for me these days to like really connect with like a fluffy and fun romance because sometimes they're very predictable and kind of like boring. Like I don't know like the drama I feel like in the tears and the sadness and the heartache in heavier books I feel like has been what's like keeping me lately but these types of books I forget like how much I love them until I start reading them and I'm like oh that's why like you literally get transported to a world where like everything's pretty much perfect but there is like some crazy stuff like at the end of this um book it like it's I was literally gasping at one part of the book I'll say that um so there are some things that happen that you're just like whoa like we're not in the fluffy world anymore <laughs> like this is intense and it talks a lot about like workplace and like obviously i shared how like you know how some people can undermine you in the workplace so this is such a good book read this one um and then i read guys girl wasn't really obsessed with it i think of this i rated 2.5 out of 5 stars um it just didn't hit the way that i wanted to it didn't really feel like a, a romance and i wish that it had um so yeah my top two favorite books i think of this whole video are these two um very very good and i also really enjoyed most of them like i think the only one i didn't really enjoy was guys girl so i hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope that you guys got some inspiration for your own 24-hour reading challenge and i hope you guys will actually do one because they're fun even if you don't finish them in a day um they're still fun regardless so uh come back on uh saturday and we'll have a fun video and i'll see you guys in the next one bye guys